All right. Joining me now here on the Rebotchables <laughs> are my good pals, Andy Shields and Mark Susco. We're going to be talking about the 1993 children's film, The Sandlot, released on April 7th, 1993. The budget for the movie was $7 million. It did 34 at the box office and an additional 75 and plus at home sales. Just the initial rewatch. How'd you guys feel about watching it again? Wait, first of all, seven million to make thirty-four. How much yeah, of that seven in the nineties? How much of that seven million went to getting James Earl Jones on camera for six minutes? <laughs> <laughs> he definitely got paid at least five hundred thousand, right? <laughs> Had to. Well, is, is him or Dennis Leary the biggest talent? I guess James, oh, Earl, James Earl Jones. He's it's there, James Earl Jones, Jones, right? He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, mean, I, I, I was. I'd re- Field of Dreams was ni- 89, right? Or 90? Yeah. So this is after Field of Dreams. After massive, star. massive star. Yeah, he's yeah, huge. He probably filmed his entire scene in one day. Um, one take. I was surprised. My biggest takeaway from watching it again was there's no wasted scene. It just, like, flows. The you tell, Like, the story is told perfectly. You get in and you get out. And, like, Same. there's no scene where I'm, like, ah, I don't, you know, fast forward, like, it's just like they edited out the right stuff and it's like just perfect. Yeah. Mark, you want to well, give your, your little quick spiel like your 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 Well, no, I mean I feel like uh, Mark's on I've watched this movie so many times. I used to work at a day camp and we'd play this every summer. Um, yeah, it, it still holds up. I haven't seen it in like probably 10 years now, but it still holds up and so, similar to what you said Mike, it's like it flies by. Like I feel like they don't make movies that are like an hour and a half or an hour forty five minutes anymore. Every movie now is yeah, this two, is one forty one too, and it didn't feel that way. No, yeah. it flies. Um, yeah, still holds up for sure. So I I loved this movie. I remember watching this on VHS all the time growing up. Like yes, we were just a little bit younger than the kids that are in this movie by the time that it hit VHS. So like we were living this same life during those summers that these kids were like buddies who rode bikes around and played sports all day every day because that's just what you did like a group of kids who just constantly shit on each other all day long without swearing because they'd get in trouble and like the daily anxiety of not knowing whether or not you're going to get nine guys out to field a team on the baseball field and then the like overblown and overhyped evil of the weird guy in the house that you never saw that you made made up stories about. Like this is everything about this movie speaks to summers in the nineties growing up as a kid. And this is, I mean, it's set in the 1960s and not much changed. No, I was actually curious. We were why, just before the change. Yeah. I, I, maybe we get to this later, but I, I was curious why they chose like specifically 1962. I have, part I, have of my, that, I have that info oh, part for of us. Thought process yeah. was, I don't yeah. know if I'm going to ahead of myself, but I mean, it was the year <clears throat> after I think Roger Maris broke Babe Ruth's record. So I didn't know if that played into it at all. I don't mm. know. I'm just thinking, thinking out loud about that. Maybe that's not the There reason. is a record involved. I'll, 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 why don't I just tell you right now? Um, so Why don't I just tell you the name of the movie? <laughs> Sandlot was set in 1962 because of a subplot that was eventually cut from the film. In 1962, Dodgers great Maury Wills chased down the stolen base record. He swiped 104 bags in a single season. And they had scenes where Squints was listening to the Dodgers games on the radio, and every time Wills would steal a base, the Jet would try and do more and other things like that. So they do mention Maury Wills very briefly in that opening animation, but then that's the okay. you don't hear from him the rest of the movie. That's interesting. They probably I thought do. it was like way too much over people's heads, right? Like, who cares about Maury Wills? Well, I do think they like nailed a lot of the historical accuracy, like even... Again, I know we're gonna get this like the Babe Ruth scene where he's like, "Henry Aaron, can I keep this?" Like yeah, looking at the baseball nice card, touch. like it's yeah, a nice touch, great yeah. like historical touches like that. Mm-hmm. So Roger e- Roger Ebert uh, agrees with us. Uh, <laughs> three out of four stars. He compared the movie to a summertime version of a Christmas story, based on the tone and narration. There was a moment in the film when Rodriguez hit a line drive directly at the pitcher's mound. And I ducked and held up my mitt. Then I realized I didn't have my mitt. And it was also then I realized how complete this movie, how completely this movie had seduced me with memories of what really matters when you are 12. 
My only problem with my only problem with that take is that I cannot picture Roger Ebert ever wearing a baseball glove, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> or even owning one. Um, uh, I was disappointed. I'm also going to say, as far as the Christmas story right. parable or the Christmas story comparison, I think this is also one of. It's kind of a sports movie, but it's not really a sports movie. It's a kids movie, and I yes. think this it's it's in my top probably top three or four kids movies of all time. And it's, I think it's between this and A Christmas Story as what I think to be the greatest kid movie ever made. Because yeah. you, have, you have the adult version of them narrating their childhood with a little bit of hindsight and a little bit of wisdom back then. And also able to make adult <laughs> jokes around the idea of kiddom. Yeah, yeah I think there's, I, a, there's a level of nostalgia <clears throat> too, like similar to Christmas Story. Um, just like you said, that summertime baseball, you're 12 years old, like baseball's the best back then. There's also far less baseball in the movie than I remembered. Mm. There's really not that much baseball. It's yeah. not like a, actual it's not a sports game movie. play or practice. Yeah, you're right. Um, Mark, you mentioned the Rotten Tomatoes, only 61% critics, but you can't. The audience scores at 89%. That's all you no, need no, to know. No, That's all you guys. need to know. Who gave uh, this the one? Yeah, Leonard Clady of Variety wrote a scathing review. I don't know who even scathingly reviews kids' movies, but he said, the team did not come together, and the film, while sincere, was a remarkably shallow wade, rift with incident and slim on substance. Screw you, Leonard Clady. How do you take that away? (laughs) There's no champ. They're not playing in the tournament. There's there's no reason to come together. Is this because only Benny held Smalls? get the fence off of the beast at the end of the movie like nobody else <laughs> if leonard has a twitter account i almost want to tweet at him like what the fuck was he yeah. looking for like a john williams overture and everybody yeah comes i don't out know now from under the fence fuck you leonard. what is his name <clears throat> leonard clady k-l lady a d-y i don't know if he's clady yeah, or claddy but he can go he can go to hell uh baseball the original title for the film was the boys of summer but it was scrapped because there was already a book with the same name and maybe a song too. Uh, Took only 42 days to shoot, mostly in Utah. Utah. Um, The kids were supposed to be younger, 9, 10. Um, But they quickly found out when interviewing those kids that 9 and 10-year-olds are really hard to wrangle. So they like (laughs) upped it to 12 to 13. And still that even came with some issues. One story from an oral history was... They were all like, it was really hard to get them all to focus at the same time because like somebody's always like looking down or like just being a kid. <laughs> so at one point, the actor who plays Squints told the director, all right, we'll be good, but we want something in return. I want a copy of this month's Playboy. <laughs> the director got it for him at lunch. And from then on, everything was fine after that. Amazing. Great negotiation. <laughs> I, love that, I love that even the actor that plays Squints is like, we yeah. Are yeah. 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 It was all shot in That's Utah, great. aside from a few scenes in L.A., and they they all lived in, like, this little condo complex, and they became, like, like a little, like, family team that way. They would, like, sneak into R-rated movies. They saw Basic Instinct, and all their parents were upset. Um, they would play lots of Street Fighter, apparently, on Super Nintendo. Uh, so they were just doing uh, exactly. what, I was what we were the, doing when we were kids. Like, like we the best do. summer of their lives, like, growing up. Yeah. A lot of the kids on the movie said that, I mean. I mean, yeah. and they're in like the timeless classic. So the it's a semi autobiographical film from uh, David Mickey Evans, who serves as the narrator in the film. Um, he wrote Radio Flyer, the movie, but was fired ten days into production. So this was his like, if he does, if he fucks this one up, he's like never getting back into Hollywood ever again. Um, but this was like. He wrote this. This is like pretty straightforward to what him and his brother went through. He said, my little brother and I had a really bad childhood. We got bullied a lot. And at the end of the block, there were these kids that would never let us play. And one day they were playing baseball for some reason. My little brother went down there and they had hit their baseball over a fence. And everybody knew there was a vicious dog named Hercules back there. Nobody was going to get the ball. but My brother wanted to play so badly. He said, "Okay, I'll go over and get the ball and bring it back. And then you have to let us play with you. So he did. But when he went over there, the dog ripped his leg to shreds. And the kids, instead of helping him, laughed at him. And they had to walk all the way home in shame. So he really hated those guys. Um, so I have, um, I, I, this, is, this was supposed to be saved for the end. And I'll save, I'll save part of the story for the end. But um, 
I met Scott Evans in an airport in Las Vegas and have some information, some more information later on about this is the younger brother of Mickey movie. David. Evans. This is the brother of Mickey of David Mickey Evans. Yes. Got uh, it. And um, asked him all about, asked him all about the movie. So we'll, we can, we can talk about that a yeah. little later. What, what it's interesting he, uh, though. He did, he did say he was, he wrote the, the movie at, from a place of hate, but then once he started writing it, he wrote his first paragraph and then he instantly turned him into heroes. Cause like, nice. Yeah. What did he go on to direct uh, after this? Like anything notable? Out of curiosity, do you know? Uh, maybe one of you guys can pull that up. I I don't okay. think he did much. Uh, no. Maybe he. Uh, he did. He did the Sandlot too. <laughs> the Sandlot too. I have actually refused of, to watch. He that. did some <laughs> bad sequels. Um, yeah. He did Ace Ventura: Pet Detective Junior, which was a 2009 what? movie. Oh. Uh, he so he basically is. Two. Uh, he did Beethoven's, Beethoven's third Nash and Beethoven's fourth. National Lampoon's <laughs> barely legal. <laughs> I've seen that movie. Uh... <laughs> and now he's apparently involved with an untitled Sandlot prequel. I don't know how you make these kids any younger and make it good. No. Um, I mean, he's not going to see a movie young. about T-ball. No. <laughs> Is there any other general thoughts you guys have before we get to the categories? Yeah, I think that was a good kind of uh, intro recap. No, I love this movie. I, I can't wait to okay. talk. So most rewatchable scene. I've got five. I'll give you the five. And then you guys can uh -huh. add if there's anything else you like. But this is like most of the movie. First one, the, the re-intro of Scotty Smalls to the group. So after the initial incident, this is when Benny, the scene starts when Benny grabs him at his house and brings him to the store. And you see Ham doing the old, uh, I'm the great Bambino. And then <laughs> they all, like, Benny makes the intro. They all do the spit. Like, when he reads their names off, they all spit on the ground. And then that's where Small says, like, oh, I thought you said the great Bambi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wimpy, dear. And I'll, wimpy I'll combine dear. this scene with them, them finally going to the ballpark. And then Benny convincing him to let him play because he's so desperate that he needs to practice all nine positions. <laughs> um, and then him hitting the ball directly into Smalls' glove, and then off they go. I combine those two. I think that that's okay. like that's the it's, movie. It's a good interest go. scene because it shows the characters really well and what were the personalities. Yeah, the literal I mean, Smalls, Smalls the, catching in and then and then walking the ball back the first time yeah, too. It's best. So painful. So uh, painful. The, the setting, <laughs> the setting of the feet, meticulously. Yes. Only to throw it six feet. Is uh, I, I do like the the spit intros though. That was good. I was gonna intros good. That's a good touch. Yeah. Who you thought had the best spit of all of them? <laughs> oh, I, I, didn't I, I think really Bertram's Bertram's pretty good. Bertram's is really good. Bertram and Danuna's spits are yeah. solid. Yes, bigger guys, uh, bigger spit um, So that's probably the weakest of the five rewatchable scenes. But I I just I do think it sets you off on the right the, tone. You're like, all right, these are the guys yeah. we're we're dealing with here. And this is wait, this goes all the way to. Benny hitting Smalls's glove with the fly with the fungo, right? And then yeah, and then he throws it in, and then the guys are like, okay, and then off they go. You see them playing around. Yeah, um, okay. Scene two, the treehouse campout. Um, this is directly preceding that. The next couple scenes where obviously they're explaining the lore of Hercules. We get the forever, just the great Squint story, telling the story of his grandfather and Hercules. Just great sleep out vibe. You get that's where you first hear you're killing me, Smalls, where him is explained to him, you want some more? And he's like, some more what? And he gives the whole like great description of how to make a s'more. He's like, first you take the gram, and then you take the mala. <laughs> you want to get a little burnt. This is, this is where I wish we had playback on <laughs> yeah. from the movie. Well, well. Yeah, if, I, if we edit it up, we can put it in there. Um, but that's just like a great like kids, yeah, scene. Sleepovers are the like, best when you're that age. It's you live for that. I want to camp out. I'll camp throw out this in into uh, a nick a nitpick here because there's going to be a lot of nitpicks. We're we're gonna have to sprinkle them in throughout. Why is there a treehouse above Hercules' yard? I have I have a lot of theories on this. I want to save it for picking nits, though. Okay, I've got, right. got some takes. Apparent, I think it might be the Timmins's treehouse. 
the Timmons brothers house. Something I read online described it as that, but like they never follow up on that. I have this all. for unanswerable questions is whose tree house is it? Yeah. Cause it's like, where parents are like, hey, we're going to go have a sleepover in the treehouse. Like, whose treehouse? Oh, you know, the one over that big, scary yard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just assumed it was, like, built there and it was kind of used for the public. I didn't really but it's see in, you can see a house in the background. It's definitely someone's backyard. Mm. It's not just It's not just a yes. lot. Because the, right. the, the lawn is kept. And That's a good question because how, how, how do the persons who live there not know anything about this crazy neighbor that has this crazy dog? Yeah. So I think this is relatively common in suburbia, especially if the parent, if like, if the, the guy 60s, never comes yeah. out of his 1960s house. 1960 suburbia, though. Yeah. The par- even in 1990s yeah. suburbia. So the, the guy that lived next door to us, we had a very, we had a small driveway and we had a basketball hoop on our garage. And if we hit the rim and the ball bounced left and it would bounce over into this guy's fence, he had like this little shitty wire fence that we would have to crawl over to get to. And we ended up just like stepping on the fence to get over to get the basketball. And we always thought that this guy's dog was going to come out and bite the shit out of us. And one day the <laughs> old guy yelled at us. And the only interaction we ever had with this guy was him yelling at us. So we always just like, yeah. we overhyped just like they do with the beast, the evil of this yeah, guy. Yeah. The yeah store. We played, we played football on a, in like my friend's yard. And then, but the end zones would be the two adjacent yards. So we're basically using like three front yards as one. And like the two adjacent people did not sign up to have us play football on their yards. So like anytime we screwed something up, they would come out and be like, come on, kids. Like, and they, they were like the two families on the block that had no kids. So they were so angry about like the destruction <laughs> that we would cause. But we were never going to stop because we were and just like dumb the, little kids in the 90s. And as yeah. kids, then those are the bad people. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You kind of build them up in your mind. You have, and you want to antagonize them more, almost too. Yeah, you have this like very, very categorical way of thinking when you're 10, 11, 12 years old. You get labeled as good or bad mm-hmm. people. And like, I don't think that I have a lot of questions about Mr. Myrtle and the neighboring <laughs> and, and yes. like, the geography we'll of the neighborhood. Um, yeah. We can save that for later. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't um, think that it's uncommon to not know that much about your neighbor. No, that's fair. Yeah, it's that's more fair. just that's weird. That, like, how, how did that treehouse come about? It's also massive to be able to fit nine kids. We got nine guys in there. <laughs> <laughs> and in a lot of the camera angles, you can only see like two of them. It seems even bigger. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a big tree. And with, it can also fit, what, four vacuum cleaners at once? <laughs> Yeah, Wait, that was three. Yeah. Was three, right? yeah. Was three, three back in cleaners. Three yeah. back. <laughs> All right, so my third rewatchable scene is is my pick. Um, it's a combination of three scenes, though, but it's Jesus. I call it the crushing. It's the crushing the little leaguers montage. Yeah. So it okay. starts with the with the green thing. onions. It's a song called Green Onions. The when they come in, you get the insults between Phillips, which is his only credited name, and Ham going back and forth. You know, you bob for apples in the toilet and you like it. Uh, the name calling is fantastic. You play ball toilet. like a girl. That was all improv, apparently. Scab eater. Um, then you get the montage of them kicking their ass. Just a great beat down. I love, like, the little things. They're all wearing jeans, which I love. And I love that, uh, like, the little, when Bertram slides in, he's like, beat you. Like, <laughs> just a great little touch. And then yeah. Benny caps it off with the grand slammer. And yeah, then off the that lead, and then I'm including the the celebration with the the big chief the shoe, and then the vomiting. So that's all one. Oh, okay. It's like You're it's all one like ten minutes long. It's really over. not that long because the scene long. of them playing the game really only lasts like I timed it out. It's like a minute and forty five seconds. It's not a long scene. Once you get past the initial shit talking of Ham, and then like this, is that your sister out there in left field, naked? She's naked. And then he drops the ball. He drops the ball. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. But that, it's, like, that, whole thing. Is that brings, like, a, it brings in a total... I think Porter is, like, the quintessential... Like, Benny, obviously, is the star of the movie. But you see in that scene that Porter is the classic catcher. He's yes. the guy that knows oh, what's yeah. going on all the time. He not... Ben, like, you would think when those kids roll in that Benny would be the one standing up for everyone. He's the biggest. He's the only one that's gone through puberty, which might have something to do with him being the best player on the team. And (laughs) you would think that he would step up and be the one to talk shit back to the rich kids, but it's Porter who completely takes over and crushes that scene. He's got some 
incredible, incredible insults. Apparently that so apparently that was uh that was improv from him and the director also had a bullhorn and was just yelling things out for him to say. <laughs> <laughs> and Porter was like, You want me to say that? Really? And he was like, Yeah, just go with it. Can so we, like would you do you mind if I go through these? Because I think it's it's a great yeah, read essence. them all. Well, yeah. Idiot, moron, scab eater, butt sniffer, puss licker, fart smell smeller. Plus liquor, and we start plus into, liquor. And we start into like, what do you, <laughs> you eat dog crap for breakfast, geek. You make your wings with your mama's toe jam. You bop for apples in the toilet and you like it. And then finally. And like, I love the way he says and you and like you it. like it. And then finally, <laughs> you play ball like a girl, which shuts great. everyone And up. the way they film that too, like the dead silence for a good yeah. five seconds to build it up. Plus, I, I really like Porter's uh, like comments when he's catching during that game. He's like, hey, "Yeah, do you have sister those too? out there." Yeah, I don't have the full list. No, I just, I just remember when he's like, "Is that your sister?" <laughs> yeah, out there in left field, naked. You think she go I out? With says, me? He also says, <laughs> if, "If I was as ugly as if I was as ugly as if my dog were as ugly as you, yeah. I'd shave his butt and make him walk backwards." <laughs> yeah. and then the kid misses the pitch by approximately four and a half feet. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, so I don't think I ever knew this as a kid, and I probably don't have a great grasp on it now. What the hell is Toe Jam? <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, is I that like the gook that. underneath your toes? Yeah, it's the gook and toenails. Your toes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I just bearded Mike out for the rest. Of the podcast. <laughs> Mike's gonna be thinking about Toe Jam for the next forty minutes. Um, I mean, there are notes I had on this scene. Uh, I mean, the vomit scene, just like. Big Chief, the best. <laughs> like, just a great sell. Perfect that Bertram <laughs> led that too. Um, saving it up. Benny paying for everybody, just a great move. Like t- dropping twelve bucks back then, like as a twelve year old. Like <laughs> um, the chaw was made up of licorice and bacon bits. Uh, nice. And many of them actually got sick doing the multiple takes on the rides with their mouths full, but the vomit was fake, which is ridiculously fake. Um, Made up of split pea soup, baked beans, uh, water, and gelatin. Interesting. What pea soup really has its place in the fake vomit? The the overacting during the getting sick is is pretty funny. Just like the... the, the, I was going to talk about this and um, I, I think that they got this, they got this right for the first like five seconds. When people start, yes. like, you get that first wave of nausea being, not that I have that much experience with, I mean, I dipped a lot in college and in high school, but on the baseball field. And when you get nauseous to that first time, everything is fine. You're right in the nicotine high and then it yeah. quickly goes south and you go from smiling and having a good time to oh, something's wrong. And I think they, like, all, everyone that's on yeah. at that point gets that caught. Like, they capture that really well. But then, you're right, they go, they go over the well, top. And, then, and just the way, it's like, the vomit looks like it's just some guy with a bucket off camera, yeah. like, just going like that. <laughs> like, it's so much. Like, <laughs> great color, though. Perfect color. Great color, yes. <laughs> um, and then, I think, Tequila was playing during that, right? Tequila, also, yes, great yeah. soundtrack. Great soundtrack. Um, um, all right, Booker T yeah. is the uh, the man behind Green Onions. Onions. Yes, which is, I think, yeah, it's on Rolling Stones like top five hundred songs of all time, which is it's definitely like top fifteen instrumental only. No, no lyrics. Yeah. Um. So that I mean, I, I think that's my pick at the end of the day. I've gone back and forth. Uh, fourth scene I had is the the pool scene. Yeah. Uh. That's my number one. Yeah. I mean, I just like, I I can't go back and forth because it doesn't have anything to do with baseball or the movie, but it's just such a great, like, little side sequence. I mean, you don't see it coming. I feel like it's just, it comes out of nowhere that he's drowning on purpose. I mean, if you actually did that, like, in your town, I feel like you'd be a legend. I mean, like, people would be talking about you for years. Yes. Um, it It starts with him, like, also, just quietly going by, like, hey, ladies, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And he does the cannonball, and, like, 
it makes no splash whatsoever and then they <laughs> cut like a second later and it's like the most giant wave of all time. They, had, they must have had a really good strong bucket guy on set with the vomit. Yeah, really <laughs> strong bucket guy. This, um, this, I think, the pool is even more so than the insult, the insult like Western style face off. This yes. is Porter on one million percent. Like he's not saying a yeah. word. He's like kind of yeah. calling out, "Hey, ladies, how you doing?" Like blowing them kisses. Oh, it's sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's sexy. Yeah. All over the place. This is my, <laughs> this is my best Porter for sure. Yes. <laughs> and and then he's done in the scene, and then it's just squints takes over. Awesome. Um, but like oiling and lotioning, lotioning and oiling. I can't, take it can't take it anymore. I've spent um, my entire every day of my adult life. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, pool scene was shot in freezing cold temperatures, which so which is actually why they're both shivering. And his teeth are actually chattering. It was fifty six degrees that day, wow. and normally the rest of the shoot was like one hundred and five days. They said it was just like that wow. one anomaly where the day they booked the pool, it happened to be really cold. Um, Squints was very excited for the scene, the actor. I think he was 12 and the actress was like 18 or 19 at the time. Uh, and <laughs> well, the director, sorry, the director um, said right before they started shooting, he said, quote, I said, I told him, listen to me. You keep your tongue in your mouth. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Marley, uh, what's, what's Wendy Peppercorn's seconds. name? Marley, um... Marley Shelton. Marley Shelton. Yeah, she was either 18 or 19 at the time of filming. She has 71 credits. Uh, this magic moment comes on right away. It's just great. The little smile he gives like halfway through is so perfect. Um, I love the way that like as a kid, this is like, like, what was that? Where we were like nine or 10. Like the way that she picks him up in the pool from behind is like the sex I thought was like the sexiest thing ever when I was a kid. <laughs> Because she gets like all of her boobs, like <laughs> she like envelops him from behind. <laughs> I always remember as I mean, a kid, would, just like rewinding that. Of doing this as a kid, I feel like I would have never had the guts to go through with it, though. I mean, I, I would have no. fan fantasized about this no, all the time. Absolutely. No chance I actually would have ever done this. I mean, you can't get it, you couldn't have got away with this in the 90s. You don't think you could have? Maybe not even the 70s. This is assault. Why not? Ah, oh, you could get away with it. The 90s? Come on. Absolutely. Maybe not. Okay. Maybe, maybe not 2018, 2019. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, this is also the introduction of not the introduction, but the follow up to the introduction of Wendy Peppercorn. One of, I think, like the great for our generation, like one of the most iconic movie girls. Of all time, like you of said, kids movies for sure. Wendy Peppercorn and everybody. It's like Jessica Rabbit. Right. Uh, yeah. Everybody knows it. Yeah. There aren't even that many. The, the thing usually there's not like girls like that in kids movies, right? Like, not that hot. No. <laughs> no. No. You know what I'm saying? Normally, Honey ducks. Nothing. I mean, like, no. Yeah. There's Home there's, alone, there's nothing. There's Connie and Julie the cat Gaffney and the Mighty Ducks. Rookie of the year. Like she's not that. That girl's like whatever. She's yeah. too young. It's because they threw in an older. They threw in like an adult. Yeah, yeah, they threw yeah. in the teenage, the, the high school girl. Yeah, it's great. It's completely Good like point. the unattainable, completely unattainable high school girl. Yes. And <laughs> it just so happens that the nerdiest, smallest kid on the team is the one with the, the largest yeah. set of Ends balls. up marrying her. <laughs> yeah, um, we can get to that later. Uh, I have a lot of questions about that relationship. Uh, <laughs> and then the fifth rewatchable scene is the montage of the five failed attempts before benny finally decides to go over so wow you it starts a lot. well i mean no the failed attempts it's, it's, it's I, all I, I, yeah. i'd consider I, I, I that to be one yeah, so it's yeah. the first one is just the broom handle where they're just trying to like yep. get it and then hercules eats it squints by the way is amazing the whole time with the wheaties box oh. thing like yeah. every line he delivers is fucking perfect like just <laughs> a little closer uh, <laughs> you got it Pull it up. <laughs> Second attempt was the pan on the end of the stick, which Hercules crumples and somehow throws back over the fence. Uh, <laughs> the third attempt was the vacuums, which the catcher mask such an attempt. 
which like Hercules crimps it. Like, why didn't they just turn them off? Yeah. But I guess, and the, the way they go flying out of that treehouse is crazy. I, 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 and the explosion is like here. massive. <laughs> it's just three vacuum cleaners. There's like flames. The, and then the Timmy, the Timmy shake yeah. and the, where he's got all the dust on it. I, it's <laughs> so much dust. How long did it take him to cover him with all of that? Dust? <laughs> so <laughs> like, it's dust. like a pound of dust comes off of it when he shakes it off. Um, and his line is great. When he comes out, he goes, yeah, uh, fantastic. we've been going about this all wrong. I blame myself, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, for a guy who hasn't like spoken the whole movie. It's great. Um, then also, the, the only, I think the only Tommy line that Timmy doesn't repeat is that. Is that line, right? I think so. Could be. I think yeah. Right. yeah. That, but I, I think, think so. Right. I think so. And then the fourth attempt is when Yeah, Yeah goes airborne. Um, he fucking has it and just drops it. I, this is a picking uh, it's he's so too frustrating. Busy. He's too yeah. busy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a great, it's that was hard. their best attempt. Like, I got they a little problem. It. I got a little problem with yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it could have been cast a little better. His hair, his hair never moves. He's a baseball player. I don't like well, the lip thing that he does when he gets. Oh, the I thought ball. that was hilarious. The, the lip thing. <laughs> it's good, but nobody actually does that when they're. Yeah, no, no, nobody does. Right? That. <laughs> That's no. what you do when you're making fun of someone who has gotten scared. But I like. Yes. I like the way that this sequence of attempts really kind of follows a couple of rules like it follows kid logic which yes. is easiest thing first then let's escalate and then let's really start to go big like did you guys ever get balls stuck in a tree yes oh yeah, yeah. the things you would do yeah would crazy yeah. all of the things like how many times someone would have gotten seriously injured if yes. the attempts that you made to get the ball out of the tree went wrong uh-huh. right like Yes. Sticks and climbing and getting up on the roof and then getting up on the roof with a contraption and then getting up on the roof with another contraption attached to that yeah. contraption. It follows. That's why this is so genius. Yeah. Because it's like we've all been there. Like you've all had it like under a car or like in a sewer grate. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, we've done, I've done some amazing rescues with my friends from like sewer grates. Um, Smallest guys going down there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the fifth, the fifth one was the erector set. Like, It's a little, like they needed at least three days to build that. <laughs> this is a picky knit. I had erectors, like I had an erector set, and like you wouldn't need that's like a hundred erector sets put together to make that operation. He Small built a car really and a ramp in one in an afternoon. Every piece of erector set he had, yeah, everyone he has. <laughs> it's great, and then he gets the catapult, which is that's just like a great like drama. They and then they, like Hercules goes and grabs Squints, it. Squints uh, is great narrating that. Can I, I got, I got a knit to pick with, um, with the erector set scene. Can we just do this now? Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's too many to do later. So just do them as they go. The path of the ball. And I think, I think that this movie did a lot of things right with baseball physics, like, mm-hmm. except for what well, we can talk about the way that the kids hit later on too, but the path of that ball, when it gets catapulted over the fence, right? Right. Benny, <laughs> you remember Benny is standing about 30 feet behind the fence the ball yeah. gets launched benny says is the best player on the team right benny yeah. says i got it i got it and the ball somehow is on a downward trajectory and lands <laughs> like six inches short of the fence in the yeah. beast out in the beast <laughs> yeah. i mean but the, but you also got to think there's no way that little car could generate that much power i don't know Did those things power? are powered with little dinky batteries I, I didn't have yeah. that, so I, I don't know. Hercules also <laughs> looks enormous when he catches it. <laughs> yes. It's like the largest thing of all time. So I that's a, ro- that's a robot. Too. That was a robot. They use a rope, half robot, half two real dogs. I, I that do think clearly like, a robot in that moment. I do think part of the way they portrayed the beast is like the kid's interpretation, like larger than yes, life. Totally. You know, that kind of yeah. thing. So this goes you know, back to actually it. line up. The campfires or the campout scene too, yes. where you get the yes. introduction of the beast lore, where Squints tells yeah. the story. <laughs> yeah. You get the you get the introduction of an unreliable narrator, right? That yes. they have overblown this thing. So, like, what you're seeing then is what the kids saw and were thinking yeah. at the time. Yeah. Yes. 
Well, not, the end of the end line like, he gives well, is uh, right. later on. I forgot movie. to mention earlier. He goes, uh, he ate the bone and all. Bone and all. <laughs> 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 so those are my five scenes if you guys have anything else to add i'm, I'm fine i mean that was i think i would choose between the <laughs> i know but i would probably choose the pool or the or the the montage with the other team i'm gonna add another another um nominee yeah i'm gonna go with the night game okay yeah i left this one off yeah that's fair i think that if we're talking about like capturing capturing childhood and kiddom, I think that the night game does an incredible job of um, like really showing how the, the block party on the street and the cul-de-sac yeah. is incredibly staged. It's set up well. It's exactly what it would look like at that point in time. Like. Mm -hmm the the amount of elusiveness that they show of like the possibility of playing an actual night game before lights before high school before you had before you had yeah. lights baseball field and like being a kid and loving baseball so much but still being completely un, un like in, incapable of looking yeah. away from fireworks and shiny things is also yeah. great and you've got the ray charles yeah it's so America's good beautiful love movie. that yeah. so that's a great song yeah. every time i watch this movie yeah yeah, that, I left that one off. It was just because it's so quick. It's only like a minute and a half. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And the special effects on the fireworks in the sky bothered me, um, which I never <laughs> realized until this time. So apparently, if, I didn't you look pick up closely, if you look closely, it's like they had stock footage that was only like, like, so movies are shot in 16 by 9, like if you turn your phone on your sides. They had like footage that was only this, but like a box. So just like they took it off a TV and then they stretched it out like yeah. on its side so it's like so a sky it's like a sky coming. turned on its side yeah um it's very fake but it doesn't yeah. i mean whatever it's great him hitting the ball and then them all losing it in the fireworks is great and then it that dissolves to the next day of them picking the ball up at the very same spot um yeah back to the ball uh like on the by attempt number three that ball is so dirty <laughs> and disgusting <laughs> like what were they even going to do with it if they got it back <laughs> question. yeah it's a really good question, good question. yeah you can't, I mean, it you can't the, the, yeah. the signature you barely see it yeah you clean Mark, it up. Do you have any other scenes or no no i mean i i had split up some of those scenes that you talked yeah about. that's fair um I had all the five away. uh attempts I, I like the yeah yeah attempt the best in terms of rewatchability I always get hooked in on that, but I like that yeah. they only gave him the catcher's uh, vest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just, just the vest. vest. Yeah. Get the mask. <laughs> that's all you need. <laughs> I uh, think that's like a nineteen sixty because Jeff Porter guy. needed an extra large and is probably falling off. Yeah, yeah, his small hands. Yeah. Um, I left off the final chase just because I don't, I don't love the final chase. It's like, yeah, it's fine. It needs it's to happen. It it's gets good. us at the end of the movie, but it's fine. It's, it's, you're not rewatching it. And the opening credits are good. Um, yeah. Just this, like the, you get the do, 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 and like. I mean, the, the, but, opening, the opening line in the movie is the greatest, mo there is a, what is it? It's the greatest moment in the history of sports happened in the 19, whatever World Series. Um. Or there, there is one clearly clear-cut greatest moment in all of sports history. Like that's yeah. the opening line of the movie. You're like, well, I, I, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Which I wanted to ask at the end what that, what you guys think is the greatest moment in sports history. But we can say that Ooh. for the end. Yeah, we that's can say that. Question. Um, so, what if you had to, if you do have to vote now, what would be your most favorite scene? I would go uh, the pool scene, um, or I would have did the back and forth with Porter. I think they're kind of one A, one B for me. The Porter with him and the other Little League team, Phillips, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm going with the camp out, and I don't think it's close. <laughs> <laughs> I have, so I've got, I've got That's a couple. That's good. I went back and forth that are even included on there. I got a couple of takes on the camp out. So um, if we're talking about rewatchable movies, what do you get from rewatchable movies? You get references, you get quotes, you get stories, right? That scene has three of the most 
quotable lines in all of like kid childhood movie 90s movies in within yes. like a three minute span you get you're killing me smalls you get yeah. some more what which everyone knows and you yeah. get forever all yeah. within five minutes forever. and <laughs> yeah there's just i don't th- you also get like the introduction of the legend of the beast you like the whole the whole yeah. The crux of the movie gets set up like the yeah. central plot. That's a good point. Not, That's like, a good point. It's a great scene. It's brought up there. It's a great scene. The pool's <laughs> great. The the insult western is fantastic. But I gotta go. I like that, that that name for it. insult western. It's good insult western. Look at they got the music that comes on too. Uh, all right. Uh, what's age the best? I have a a bunch <laughs> here. Uh, the sixties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just had capturing that like 1960s yeah. summer vibe, like, like the jeans, the cars, the milkman, the picnic, the fireworks, uh, kids playing with adult without adult supervision or care. We don't meet a single other parent of any other kid the entire time. None of them are at the pool. Like you think of like the chance that like someone would be at the pool and be like, "Hey, mom," or like at the carnival, yeah, at the picnic. At the fireworks, their other parents are nowhere to be found. It's a good point. Which is great. Make sure you're home for uh, dinner. I think the stepdad dynamic has aged the best. <laughs> I think, like, for a kid's movie, like, like, I feel like that's, like, they really went there, right? Like, in a yeah, good way. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Usually they avoided tough topics like that. And, like, yeah, he's yeah. total Ran dick. Total of, what, six, seven minutes of screen time? Yeah. Also, why is um, that stepdad always got to go to business in Chicago? It's always in Chicago. Yeah, it's always in <laughs> Chicago. You're right. Um, <laughs> the soundtrack probably is my number one. Uh, yep. You got In the Jungle kicks off the camp out. This magic moment for the kiss. Tequila for the vomit. Green Onions. Green onions. America the Beautiful. Wipe out for the chase scene. Like, just oh, great. Yeah, great all around. Awesome. Yeah. Great soundtrack. And then the final thing I had for West Asia Best was the names. If we want to go through them now, just oh, uh, Benjamin Franklin Rodriguez, the Jet, Hamilton Porter, Ham. Can you do Michael positions Squins. with each uh, each name? I don't like. What's Benny's true position? I, that's what I was kind of wondering. <laughs> I I he know. plays all the positions. He's just but a he, fill-in guy. Does he? If you have the positions, then rate them off. I was just. I I just think the names themselves are incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays. He plays Fungo guy. He yeah. hits the fungos. But then, like, when and he hits the, the fungos and he hits home runs. We don't. But they have. Yeah. We don't when see Benny make he, a single a defensive player. play in the entire game. No, you don't see him the yeah, entire yeah, movie. Yeah. yeah. But he says he, he wants the nine guys so he can rotate to all nine positions. Right. That's right. true. I did like. I did. This is another thing that they did well. When they bring the ninth out, they tell Smalls to go play left center. They yeah. could have made this. They could have overlooked this and sent him into right field or left field. But yeah. they've got nine guys on the field. One of them's got a bat, so they got to play two outfielders. That was a yes. really smart thing that they did. Yes. But yes, we don't see Benny do anything in the field. All we see him do is hit home runs, hit fungos, and make terrible base running mistakes. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to the <laughs> <laughs> Just to, to yeah. rain down the other list of names, Michael Squints Paladoris, Alan Yeye McLennan, Kenny DeNunez, Bertram Grover Weeks, just to throw the Grover in there is just great. Uh, <laughs> and then Timmy Timmons and Tommy Timmons. Uh, like, how do you even come? I, I always wonder that about movies is like <laughs> the coming up with the names of the characters. It's like incredible. It's fantastic. Do you have Thanks. anything? Uh, you guys have anything down for what's age the best? Yeah, I got plenty. I, I had the same list as you. I had that 1960s <laughs> summer vibe, the original Sandlot cast, and then the score soundtrack for Night 3. Yeah, the soundtrack's yeah. definitely number one. Yeah, The yeah. soundtrack is amazing. I also think, um, <laughs> like when you said the names aged really well, uh, I also think that a name that we left off was uh, Squigman Paladoris, Squint's mm. former <laughs> police chief. <laughs> <laughs> who, looks like, who looks like Eugene Levy, but he's not. Uh, <laughs> um, I think we already talked about this a couple of times, but uh, kids thinking that the the unknown neighbor is evil and have to get them. Yes, I think that's aged pretty well because we. Yeah, I, that's good. That. Um, 
the myster- I think one thing that has aged well about this is the myst- and I, I think it really makes the movie work. I don't think if they do this poorly, I don't think the movie works. The mysterious buildup of the beast due to waiting an hour and like 10 minutes into the movie until they show us what he actually looks like. Yeah. It's like they do this. It's a mystique. It's like a yeah. horror movie or a bond. It's movie. like Jaws. Jaws doesn't, sh- you don't see Jaws for right. over an hour. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a horror movie and a bond movie trope where they, they don't show the villain. You just have this, this legend, this, this mystique about the villain that, that you never yeah. see. And once you see him, it's like, okay, it's, now he's yeah. real and underwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, the legend of it's good. Um, the grandeur of tearing the cover off the ball aged really well. <laughs> yeah, I got some I problems. Remember with taking that, like <laughs> shittiest baseballs in the bucket in high school and in college into the cage and seeing if we can recreate this scene. Just like see if we could tear the cover off of a baseball that's already bleeding to death. And you can't, right? It's physically right. impossible. You need it to be hanging on by a thread. <laughs> yeah, it can, it can get worn down. I feel like for that, but or not just be better sweet. than I was. Yeah, <laughs> I'll see it. and I've I'll, the, my last one was the use of in the in the legend of the beast the use of bad guys in striped shirts and masks, <laughs> <laughs> which they that also whole think. recreation is really funny. Yeah, but it's really funny. and um, the parallel to the Christmas story, they do the exact same thing with Black Bart's henchmen in the Christmas yes. story with the yeah, vertical, the call. horizontal. Black yeah, you're right. Yeah, shirts and yeah. Masks. good call. <laughs> And um, I also had Ray Charles sings "America the Beautiful." Yeah, um, yeah, that soundtrack. But yeah, that's the highlight. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that rendition is like one of my favorite things. So of good. All time. I feel like you don't hear that that frequently, though. That rendition. I mean, I, I feel like I, that's the only time I hear the song is when it's I'm watching the Sandlot. So good. Yeah. Um, what's age the worst? I don't have a lot. I I had put Toe Jam on there, uh, <laughs> but you, <laughs> <laughs> just because you didn't know what it was. <laughs> um. I think the use of the word shit, which comes out three to four times, just, I don't know if that's age of worst, but it is a kid's movie. And I feel like parents probably show it to their kids and they don't realize that's coming a lot. Uh, I, I had this at the top of my list. Cause again, I used to coach at a camp in the summers and yeah. we would watch it with the campers and the three of us that knew the movie really well would blow our whistles when the curse was like coming out. We wow. Like time it and watch the movie. So the kids wouldn't hear it and we could kind of continue on like naturally. Um, but yeah, it's so random. Like, why do you have three curse words in a PG you movie? You could curse like, in PG movies back then, but it is a, excessive, I feel. But like. it's like, what's the point? But, like, you don't need it in this movie. It didn't add anything. It was just, I think, in like that time period, it just like, that was cool. And yeah. then we got super yeah. sensitive. And now we're like trending back towards the other way, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, that's true. Um, I have uh, using a steak on a black eye. When has this ever worked better than ice? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, back in the 60s though did you have ice i don't know I, yeah i don't know if you had ice boxes i, I don't know maybe that's why so then it's then it's aged poorly <laughs> is this, exactly is this yeah. the time to talk about dennis leary's character no no okay no it's All not right. uh, okay. and then uh, the special effects are bad uh, <laughs> the vomit the fireworks the uh <laughs> the splashing the bucket guy the <laughs> the the puppet the puppet dog they're they're bad but whatever it's a not, it's like who cares there's it's I it's have, very hard to find something that hasn't aged the worst I, I have one other thing I'm curious what you guys think I I put autographed baseballs on my list I'm like oh, oh do you feel that like, is like, fantastic I, I mean, I know I'm, I'm old that's now, a really good I, I have no desire to get an autograph like I'd rather get a picture with somebody and I don't know if kids are the same way or not but. Yeah, that's a good one. That, that's a really no. Good that industry has suffered, but it still is like booming. Like I just saw yesterday that like Lou Gehrig's bat, one of his bats, sold for a million dollars. A million like autog- autograph? A million? Bat. No, just a just not even autograph. Just oh. a bat. Oh. <laughs> I looked for. I looked. I went and looked online. Uh, did, a, did a little bit of research on people bidding on um, baseball signed by all of Murderers Row. And mm. I got bids anywhere from like two grand to like seventy grand. So wow. it, Jesus. it all depends on. I guess it has an age. Who you ask. <laughs> I agree. Like, look, growing up as a kid who like kept an eye on the Beckett books, mm-hmm. for <laughs> your Jordan, course, or yeah. your Jason kid yeah. cards, like, <laughs> there's nowhere to be found now. That's yeah. a good one. I really like that. I like that more. Yeah, that's good. 
Did you have anything else, Andy? Of what stage the worst? Uh, two things. Smalls' is hat. And he plays, <laughs> Great call. Shows up at the diamond. And another thing in the exact same scene, which is, I think, the thing that's aged the, the worst in the entire movie, is Porter's overalls while playing yeah. baseball. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah. So you bring up the hat. I was going to bring this up later. Benny tells him to get rid of that hat. He tells him to specifically burn it, right? Why yeah, right. the hell is he then wearing it as an adult doing his <laughs> job? At the end, yeah. I, I, I don't know. That's a good question. I didn't even is, notice. Is it the same hat? At the end? He's wearing the hat as he's announcing the game. Um, yeah. It should be the one that Benny gave him, right? Yeah. It's, that's what I want. I want the one that Benny gave him. Why... He saved that shitty, like, trout hat. It, has, like, it literally has, like, a trout on it. Uh, <laughs> and Bill's, and Bill's old fishing hat. Um, yeah. Are you guys ready to pick some nits? Uh, you better believe it. Oh, my okay. God. Yeah. Uh, let's just go. I'll do one, then Mark does one, then Andy does one, because then we, they're going to be here for a while. Um, my, my biggest one is... There's no way that James Earl Jones played on the Pirates because he was black. And <laughs> Jackie Robinson didn't come around until 1942. <laughs> yet there's a picture of him in a Pittsburgh Pirates uniform with Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth saying that he was, like, the greatest player of all time. If they could have set it up like I played with Babe in, like, some schoolyard game or, like, like, because what or Babe I was known to play Bob in a lot of pickup Gibson. games like that. Yeah, I played with Bob Gibson. He did not play with Babe Ruth. I He's didn't black. Pick up on that. Or Satchel Page, <laughs> right? Like, there's, yeah. there's, he did not play baseball in 1927 <laughs> for the Pirates. <laughs> I have that down too. It's so, really what is Jackie Robinson actually? Is he like 1930s or 1940s? 1942. 1942 is when he breaks the color barrier. I did not pick up yeah. on that. That's so funny. Yeah. That's hilarious. But apparently uh, that photo is real, is what I read. And they just superimposed like, James yeah. Earl Jones' face on it. Or yeah, Jones. superimposed yeah. a black guy on a white guy. <laughs> oh, it's a white guy. <laughs> well, you don't see his hands. He has his arms around Lou and the babe. So it's just the uh, face. Just face. I didn't realize he's a white guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it has to be. No, yeah. Now I, now I realize that. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth didn't hang around with black guys. Maybe they did, but... They certainly yeah. weren't allowed to at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> on the field. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, Andy, you were just touching on this, but I, I think picking it's Benny, Benny the Jets base running. I mean, there's at least two or three times in the movie <laughs> where he's caught in a pickle. And he's, like, lauded for getting out of the pickle. It makes no sense to me. Like, this kid clearly doesn't know how to, like, like run the bases. Rounding second. Gets caught twice, I think. Um, <laughs> he does. Makes no twice sense. <laughs> and it's like, do these kids not know how to run a fucking pickle? A pickle, you should be out ninety nine like percent of the time. Like it's the easiest thing to run. Just follow your throw. You follow your throw, which no one in the movie does. No, no. They just back and forth. It's like I think that's like that's more support for the idea that this isn't a sports movie. It's it's a kids movie. Right, yeah. like if they if they did the sports right, they would have followed their through. Like little big league would have never gotten this wrong, not a chance. Yeah. Well, what I do kind of like about the pickle thing is that like this is what you did with your friends, right? You take like the little lead off a third. That's true. And you shit yeah. talk, and you're like, I dare you to throw it over. <laughs> I dare you to throw it over. And That's then he true. throws it over, and then you get and you do like try and re maybe it was because of this movie you try and like get in the pickle. You like you wanted you wanted to do you it. Want to be in movie. the pickle. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I'm gonna. Because odds are the kid's gonna screw it up. Yeah. Well, when anyway. you're faster than everybody, yeah. When you're the best athlete on the field by yeah. a large margin, you're gonna get out of most of those. So maybe he's yeah. doing it on purpose. I'm yeah. gonna add to Mark's nitpick with, yeah. um, just with the the fact that the lore of Benny the Jet Rodriguez starts with him making a terrible base running error <laughs> and getting <laughs> into That's a rush scene. between third and home. Yeah, and what then. Is it customary, because I don't remember ever doing this, is it customary for the entire bench to clear to the third baseline to watch the pickle <laughs> while it's happening? 
Why yeah, not take not. one of those guys and have him coach third base? <laughs> <laughs> so we don't end up in the Never. pickle that we're talking about? Uh, yeah. Good so point. if you want to keep going on the, the base running, my second biggest nitpick is in the major leagues, nobody steals home, let alone with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. <laughs> so, <laughs> is, is that, I actually didn't realize that was a situation. So maybe that's... It. Maybe that's like sub. It's a walk off. It's a walk off steal of home for Benny the Jet for an aging Benny the Jet Rodriguez who looks. Wow, who Andy. Yeah. Maybe did you grow this mustache to channel him or because it's perfect? Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> that was not that was not played by Mike Piazza. That was actually, in fact, the actor who played Benny's actual older brother. Yes, in the scene. Read that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which, but I mean, looks also exactly. he he clearly didn't learn anything. He's yeah. still making terrible decisions. And I like I don't know if this was done intentionally or unintentionally, but it's it's clearly exactly and then it begs the question, how did this guy get to the major league? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he's been making mistakes since he was 13 years old. And he's not yeah. in the bigs, he's just coming out to pinch run. He's yes. the, he's the Dave Roberts of the, uh-huh. of the Los Angeles Dodgers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for, for my picking it, I, I think we touched on this uh, earlier. When they pull Yaya over the wall, he picks up the ball. All he has to do is just throw it. Throw it. Just throw it. Just I, throw I'm it. screaming at the television. Yeah. <laughs> he has it in his hand, looks at the bees, and he drops Literally it. just throw it. Yeah. Oh, my God. It, it We've seen him play shortstop. Time. He's got a cannon. He's, exactly. Uh, uh, it, it really eggs me every time. It really bothers me. Yeah. It's um, bad. Most of the other ones, I, you, you, you're up. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Um, we, we talked about, oh, I have a, they say Hercules lived to be 199 in dog years. That's 28. He's 28 and a <laughs> no, half. Yeah, 28 and a half. <laughs> like, no too. way. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Especially a big Why? dog like that that had a fence fall on top of it. Uh, <laughs> got some trauma. <laughs> probably not treated well by a blind blind owner. No, he was just outside all the time. Apparently, yeah. wrangling up baseballs with a chain uh, tied around his neck. The whole with a chain tied around, and that boy does that chain break easily. <laughs> it didn't even. <laughs> not even. A thing. Yeah. yeah, for a dog that's been always chained, he's able to break it like when he wants to. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happens when you've got a blind man checking it every day, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You can edit. Uh, I got another one. No case for for Dennis Leary's Babe Ruth autographed baseball, just out in the open, <laughs> just yeah, sitting on, on that a little, shelf. The little thing. Is that yeah. a little holder? No Maybe, but were cases a thing back then? I, I, I thought about this too. I look because he didn't it. seem to have other stuff very well protected either, so it's hard to say. But you're right. Think it out loud. When you're uh, protected a little bit, when you're clearly an asshole who hates his stepson, you're laying down the law and you just expect him to follow the rules. So he probably didn't think there was a need to protect anything. True. In the 60s, you're like, that's my stuff. You don't touch it. That's fair. All right. While we're on the subject, I'm going to talk a little bit about Dennis Leary's character. No, 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 no. You, you, we just can't wait. just wait. Just wait. What are we just waiting wait. for? Because it's a waiting. Nitpick. I'm, I was waiting for. Uh, he was my overacting award, but yeah. Oh, this has nothing to do with his acting. This is a nitpick okay. about the way that the movie is written. Okay, okay, I got you. Got to watch out for the curve. Yeah, I, had that <laughs> I have this line written down. I have this I, line written down. I, so, I <laughs> so let's <laughs> let's just walk let's just walk through this quickly this hit me like i had I never really noticed this until like we started wa- and still we had this task to to really analyze this this kid has you're 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 teaching him to play catch right will you finally teach me to play catch mm-hmm. so this kid has played catch presumably zero times that you know of and he has on the first two throws blatantly <laughs> missed the ball by feet at a time and on the yeah. third one, you're going to cross him up and throw some off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 
took the line like he was, I don't know, it was kind of like a joke, like, got to watch out for that curve. That's how I took it, the way he, he delivered that. Maybe I, 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 end I of know. The movie, he's, at the end of the movie, he's throwing, he's he's telling him to break he's his wrist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, he throws him a curve. Curveball. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. I thought the line was hilarious. because I, I never picked up on that until this watch. What an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> um. The only things I mentioned were a uh, kid knocking the cover off the ball. No way. We touched on that. Where are the parents? Touched on that. Treehouse. How'd that get there? The hat at the end of the movie. And then, uh, oh, at the beginning, he says they never kept score. Come on. Who doesn't keep score? Maybe because I, I love keeping score. But how, like, how do you keep score? Who's out there just had, not keeping score? How are you, you going to keep score? How do you keep score with nine people? guys? Yeah. You, you just come up with something. You have to have the yeah. winner. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm not playing and not win. I believe this. anything. I, I believe that you can. I believe that you can go out there and just fuck around for eight hours at a time and okay. have no idea, no winners, no losers. You just play. I, I got two. I'm more. on board for that. Uh, one. I mean, are we really to believe that Smalls at 12 years old has never thrown something? Farther than than six feet. I mean, that first throw that he—I mean, it's absolutely hilarious. But yeah, I mean, he, you know, are you not throwing anything? Like that's you don't know great. how to throw anything. But that's how Benny convinces him. He's like, "You ever like? Was he say like you ever like fished before, or something?" Yeah, I guess you're like, right. you. You do say that. Yeah. He's just in his head. He's just in his you head. Mean, you think he's just too nervous, yeah. too anxious? He's, yeah. Never yeah. throw rocks into a lake. The sixties. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> the other one I had is what, why does Benny in that final chase scene like why does he like sandlot, go back sandlot, go back yeah. to the sandlot like, and then jump back into the yard yeah I, like what was the logic there I don't I don't, I don't know I just game. think he was out of options I don't know yeah yeah he was just running man he was tired um, yeah. I got no more nits to pick though okay Andy you have any left I have a lot I think I have. Six more, at least. Okay, let's hear them. To go along with the chase scene. Uh, why is a school auditorium in the middle of the summer on Founders Day showing the Wolfman to a group of ten year olds? Crowded too, packed house. There's like thirty kids in there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll be willing to say that that's the. There were adults in there too, right? Or no? I think I just saw kids. Because that, that's like, that's what movie theaters probably were in most towns. It was just like the auditorium. Okay. Right? Right. That's how I, I took it. I, mean, I don't think it was, I don't think it was only kids. Okay. I think that was just like, that's what auditoriums were in the 60s. Where like, they didn't have, an, like some towns didn't have a movie theater. So they had to like set up a projector at the, at the school gym. Okay. That's yeah, how I took it to be. All right. But why okay. are they showing that movie in the middle on, on the, in the middle of the day? In the middle of the day on Founders Day, there's a there's yeah. a party going on outside with a yeah. cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we gotta give with a lot of cakes. We with a lot of cake, and we also gotta give props to the bucket guy who <laughs> disassembled it. that cake and then dropped it on the two chefs because yes. it hits them oh, in yeah. pieces. Uh -huh. Um, the rich kid team only has eight guys. Oh, I didn't count. Bikes. It's a good job by you. Yeah. If they're all if they're all rich kids, they should all have bikes. I don't think that there are, are like eight rich kids and then a few yeah. poor kids that they let on the team. There's a travel team. They all have jerseys. Their parents got to have money. Mm -hmm. uh, I know because we were the, the poor squad who had T-shirts when everybody else had jerseys. Mm. Uh, I'll give Wendy's Wendy Peppercorn's dive off the platform to save squad. A six and a half at best. She completely over rotates the dive. Almost <laughs> I'm too mesmerized by her. If you're yeah, a, I don't care. I don't care. The, yeah. She she makes up for it. She's a ten out of ten on the pick on the scoop. Okay. All right. So Mike, <laughs> yeah, Mike's, Mike's focused on the scene after that. Yeah. Um, Porter's home run when they lose the ball, which which causes Smalls to go get the Babe Ruth ball. Is clearly a weak pop foul to the first baseman. Yes. Yeah, and then he says low and outside, just like I like it. it, it the ball's <laughs> like at his eyeballs. They did, some, they did some interesting things. I think they just had the kids take batting practice, and in the event that they hit one in fair territory, 
or in the air, they just made him run. Because there's a couple where, like, Janunez hits one and sees where it's going and then decides to run to first base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Sure there's some weird mechanics going around with 12 year That's hard. Like, That's got to be so hard with kids. I feel like that, that was stuff. probably the time when Squints was trying to embed, or, like, ex- yeah. ex- guys for the Playboy. That's probably yeah. what happened. The um, half ass internet research is next, but I'll jump it and say they did go to, like, a camp like a baseball camp as a unit in LA for like two weeks. And they said they were actually like really good by the end of it. But then they also had to teach smalls to be bad. And that was like hard. They like taught him to suck. (laughs) He nails it. (laughs) He nails it. (laughs) Uh, When they get kicked out of the pool, someone, presumably an adult from the launch angle, throws all of their clothes out on I the notice this front. too every time yeah they don't know who these kids are they <laughs> got all their clothes exact right and threw them all out of the lawn yeah they know that those kids ride together and they just have their clothes <laughs> ready to go to toss at them yeah um, who lives next to Mr. Myrtle I think it's the Timmonses but yeah and if they have that treehouse, can't they see the dog every single fucking day to know that it's not 12 feet long and doesn't yes. weigh a perfect ton? <laughs> Great yes, call. This is Great my biggest call. problem with the treehouse. It's like, it's, it's uh, they've seen the dog. They yeah. have to have, right? Yeah. It's out there every day. And this is my last one. Um, I know he's blind, but does Mr. Myrtle not know that there's a baseball field in his backyard? <laughs> <laughs> I think, yes. I think he, that's not his backyard. He, his fence, well, his yard ends cool with the fence. Like, yeah. he's got a group of kids that show up there every day. He loves baseball. He loves talking baseball. <laughs> and he never comes out to say a fucking word to any of these kids. Yeah. He played with Babe Ruth. Don't you think he wants to talk to somebody about that? <laughs> Yeah, that's by the way, for such a scary guy, he seems like the nicest guy. Like right. Well, he's also he's also white in the flashbacks and black in real life. In the in the squint story, it's an oh, old oh. fat white guy. It's not James. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's right. A good yeah, <laughs> that's a good pick. Yeah, that's a good pick. Changing races. <laughs> Throwing full sides of meat at this thing. Uh, I like how the beast also has an incredible arm. Like the beast throws everything out of the yard that is given to him. Yeah. yeah. Just chucks it over the fence. Best dog thrower of all time. <laughs> um, <laughs> half ass in research. We've talked on most of these a lot. Uh, they built the sandlot from scratch. Everything on the set was man-made. Um, the tree that the treehouse is in, they actually bought. They like were driving down the street in Utah and saw some guy about to cut down a hundred year old oak tree, oak tree, and bought it and like took it from him. Wow! And built the treehouse. Um, the real life squints sued Twentieth Century Fox. So there's a guy named actually named Michael Polydorus, not Palidorus, <laughs> spelled differently. And he did not like the way he was depicted in the movie and sued for invasion of privacy and exploitation of his likeness. The case was dismissed promptly. I was gonna say, Jesus. Uh, this was <laughs> this was someone that um that the director's Make, crew that went the to school with. Yeah. around. Oh, okay. Yes. They, he was looking didn't... for his cash out. Yeah. But, but his uh-huh. name was actually Michael Palidorus. Yes, it was so Palidorus in the movie spells name spells also it. Squigman. Yeah. No, I. (laughs) The real Palidorus spells it P O L Y D O R O S, whereas in the movie it's P A L L E D O R O U S. So, Um, Tom Geary still hears you're killing me smalls every day of his life from someone on the street, apparently. Uh, And the beast was played by two English mastiffs and a huge puppet, which took two people to operate. We've touched on. (laughs) The touched bucket. on a lot of the other research I've done, so I'll, I'll spare you. I don't know if you guys have found anything else. Uh, uh, no, no. Yeah. Mark, did you do any? I just said the young young Benny was the uh, older brother was actually old Benny. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I had um, Wendy Peppercorn was um, eighteen or nineteen years old at the time of the filming. I had Hercules the dog. Lived, apparently lived to be 28 and a half years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
which I just think is fantastic. Um, I mean, that's not half-hat in our research, though. You just needed to have a calculator with you when you're watching. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes, yeah. This isn't. This also isn't <laughs> half-assed internet research. Uh, but the second in command of the rich kid team is also one of the Hawks from the Mighty Ducks. Ooh, oh, I love. Along that. with Jesse Hall, who is the Nunes. There's a little Mighty. Jesse duck. Hall's a Jesse Hall's a duck. Yeah. Jesse Hall's a but duck. He's, he's on right, the, right. He's on the good but then you know, and then he's, there's and Benny, the Jet, and, and Benny the Jet's a duck in, in D2. Yeah. He's the guy right. who can't stop. Yeah. yeah. But I love that. So I was going to ask the question of if you take the Mighty Ducks cast and put them in the Sandlot and vice versa. So I have that. I kind of have some of them mixed into oh, casting. For casting. Recasting. Casting. Okay. And then um, my last mm-hmm. half-assed internet research is actually um, primary source research, but is the story of how I met Scott Evans in a bar in Vegas. So oh, yeah. he told me about he told me the, the backstory and how this actually happened. But I wanted um, the only questions that I really asked him. So I didn't know that it was based on a real group of kids down the street who were menacing to these guys. Mm-hmm. I just <laughs> that, you know, they were based on, on real people. And I asked him the question, like, what what were the things that were were real and what was fabricated? And he gave me some really good information. So the dog was actually. Um, did, wait, did you say what the dog was? No, I just know it was named Hercules. He told so he told me it was a German Shepherd, <laughs> Hercules. Got it. Not a mastiff, but a mastiff obviously is bigger, so it makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they still t- to this day, and all the the guys that they that they've talked to and interviewed, they still to this day do not remember who hit the home run over the fence, but that it was a signed ball from one of the guys in the neighborhood and because they grew up so they were born in in the 60s so it couldn't have been babe ruth obviously and this story makes more sense and it's better because the lore of it in the 60s is better than the lore of it in in the 70s or 80s but the ball was actually signed by nolan ryan and not babe ruth oh that's still pretty good it was like nolan ryan like right when he started to like three straight yeah 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 League leads, no hitters, strikeouts, right when he started to become a legend. So it was, that's what that's what Scott Evans told me. Really nice guy. Nice. Yeah, good facts. Did, 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 like, how did it come up that like he was Scott Evans? I think he tells everybody who he oh. is. <laughs> <laughs> if he's like. My older brother wrote The Sandlot. I had nothing to do with the movie except I'm the inspiration. Yeah, yeah he's got his own web page where all of this information can be found. Okay. I to get it firsthand. Okay. That's good to know on Scott Evans. I hope he got a piece of the residuals from his, old, from his older brother over he's the years. Got it. He, he yeah. has to. He's, he's one of those guys that does that. He's like an entrepreneur, life coach, consultant, public speaker. Yeah. Okay. That's a good story. Yeah. Um, and you said that was in Vegas? That was in Vegas? I was in the Vegas airport. Yeah, I was flying on business. And I was having a beer at the bar and didn't want to talk to anybody. And he just gave me his business card and started <laughs> talking. And then <laughs> you want to ask him everything. So now we're going to actually wow. talk to Wow. Uh, the, uh, the That Guy Award. Which is I think this is a no-brainer. Um, it's the Babe, but yeah. Art Lafleur. He's not Art in that much Lafleur. stuff. Art Lafleur. He's got 168 IMDb credits. He's the first baseman in Field of Dreams. That's the only thing that I could that I recognize him from. But I recognize his face. Maybe it's just because I've seen the same lot so many times. I, I thought the exact same thing. I was like, I know this guy. Like I've seen him. Like, yeah. That's his IMDb. I was like, I've never seen like half this. Like I, yeah, I didn't recognize him at all. The only other name I even wrote down was Karen Allen, but I mean she's pretty famous. The yeah. mom, yeah, she's yeah. Animal House and Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> she's a good part, but kind of she plays a good mom. She still looks great in the Sandlot. It's kind of yep. it's kind of sad that her her career didn't turn into more. I agree. Like and it, yeah, this I mean was the end got, for her. She still got Raiders, right? She's still the leading lady in Raiders, which yeah, is I know. one of the most successful movies ever. Right. Yeah, that's okay. true. And uh, do you have the, any uh, that guy? Oh, mine was Art Lafleur. I know that guy yeah. from. I've seen him in a. I I only know him specifically from Field of Dreams, but his face is yeah, he's yeah. Got very guy. iconic. He's, he's great in Field of Dreams too. It's funny. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. 
uh, the uh, Vincent Hanna Mark Ruffalo. They knew. <laughs> Lord, uh, I, I, for me personally, I exempted all the kids from this because they're children. So I, my choice was Dennis Leary because, and for me, it's the underacting award because it really looks like he doesn't want to be there, and maybe that's <laughs> good overacting, or but he's just such a dick, like. <laughs> Gotta watch out for the curve. Like, so dismissive of him, like, the entire time. Like, and the only time he's nice to him, he's like, all right, I'm going to Chicago. Gotta be the man of the house. Like, that old line that's been used in every movie <laughs> that's ever been made. Um, he just, he doesn't look like he wants how, to be there. How excited was Bill? His name is Bill? Is it Bill? Bill. Yeah. How excited was Bill when he came back from his Chicago business trip to find that his son could play baseball? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This kid sucked the whole time. <laughs> I mean, after that fir- first ball and catch, he's got to be thrilled. I mean. <laughs> but he's laying on the dick pretty thick in the beginning. Yeah. You're right. Hey, Bill. Uh, do you want to, uh, you told me you could uh, teach me to play clutch? And he's like, yeah, 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 no, no. <laughs> Karen Allen is also, Karen Allen is also, she's, she's given a, she's given it all she's got. She's given it all she's got. Yeah, I want you to have friends, like get outside. Yeah. Uh, get with wide camera. eyes. Like she's really yes. over the, the overcommitted protective, but yeah. not protective. Yeah. If um, any kid's the worst, it's yeah, yeah. But. I have no disagreements with that whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Smalls, I, I put, bring, I, Smalls brings it occasionally. Like when he whines, oh he's like God, really yeah. bringing it. Like he's yeah. like a little baby. That's part of his, that, but that, I think that's intentional. There's also mm-hmm. some moments, if you go back and watch, there's also some moments where Timmy, if you watch the moment right where they decide, where Benny decides to pick the fence up off the beast, there's a moment where Timmy's, if you pause Timmy's face, he is really going for the why are we doing this look. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody yeah. else is sitting there kind of confused. His face is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really good. That's his face. That's <laughs> oh, great. It was like the scene. It's like the scene from Mission Impossible 3 where Carrie Russell's face actually explodes, like where her brain explodes. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little like that. <laughs> One more note on Leary, which I do respect him for. So obviously the arc was that he had to sign Babe Ruth ball and he was meant to be a Yankees fan, but he's a Boston guy. So they want mm-hmm. him to wear a Yankees hat and a Yankees glove during the filming of those catching scenes and he refused. I like that. Pulled the, I respect that. Yeah. He pulled yeah. the Nicholson from The Departed. Yeah. Um, any other overacting thoughts? I mean, it's hard, it's very hard with kids, that's why I feel bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I could, a lot of them are their first role ever, yeah, know? yeah. I mean, Benny's yeah. laying it on pretty thick in some of the I, we got yeah. it because of it's the right, yeah, thing, the type of thing. Yeah. yeah. I find I do he think that he's it. pretty good in the scene with Art LaFleur, though. Yeah, yeah, did we not have that for a rewatchable scene? I don't know, I have it, I had it more in quotes. It's a good uh, yeah, that's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Five. It's got more memorable quotes than it is. A, I'm not, I'm not keeping the movie on if that, that scene comes on. I'm keeping right. it. No, on. like you, yeah. you can like run to the bathroom or get a snack during that scene. Yes, yeah. you, you know all the other scenes have passed. Like the the pool scene has already passed. The back and forth mm-hmm. scene has passed. The whatever the western. All scene the attempts have passed. At that point, it's yeah. him going to sleep. Yeah. Like you yeah. just, you're waiting on the chase. It slows. It, yeah. it does slow down after about the hour hour mm-hmm. ten yeah. fifteen mark. All right, it's time for my favorite award, the Dion Waiters Heat Check Award. Can't believe it. we're going to fight about this. Well, there's only I, one option for yeah, me. There's only one option. Yeah, I think it's James Earl Jones. He is in this movie for four minutes, and he brings it so fucking hard, and he just blows everybody off the screen. Like you haven't been watching professional actors for the last See, hour. Now, now, now I'm confused. What what is the actual heat check? What does that really mean? It just it's for someone who's not it. main character. For someone who's in the movie for very brief, it's like Dion Waiters comes in, he plays 10 minutes a game and okay. scores like 20 points. He's just bringing it, bringing it all. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so I, I had Porter. I don't know if he would classify. No, he's too much of a main he's character. Too, he's like a starter. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then, yeah, my other nominee was, was Timmy. 
because even though he has like two or three lines, I think see that would be acceptable. Time. I think I think Porter's yeah. more of a main character. Okay. Okay. But or, James, James is just James, like that's, that's fair. Like, why don't you just knock on the damn door? I would have gotten the ball for you. Like from that <laughs> moment, he's just like per- the way he the smiles when voice. he takes when he takes the sip of tea. He does this like like shit eating grin on his face. <laughs> like he's his his lines are so over the top. Like. I used to crowd the plate and make the strike so disappear. <laughs> ah, I just hated that. I just hated that. Like, That's how I played. One hundred percent, all the time. All I don't time. Know, I don't understand how crowding the plate means that you yeah, played baseball. <laughs> baseball was life, Stand and I was good at it. <laughs> also, George, you- George signed this. Like Colin Babe Ruth, George. Like he's just bringing it. Like, like That's a great so call. many also, one-liners. Like right be- off the top. Also led to you being blind, so maybe it didn't work out. Yeah. So, or, <laughs> but he's, he's still like, so prideful about, about, about it. Peace about it. Yeah. But he's I in the movie for like I timed it out. It's like three minutes and thirty nine seconds, and it's Hilsey. just like a tour de force. We're gonna fight about this. That's fine. You, okay. who, who do you have, Andy? Wendy. Three. Um, I think when you look back and you ask people about the Sandlot, and you bring up the name Mr. Myrtle, Mm -hmm. people are like, yeah, that's Mr. Myrtle. Cool. James (laughs) Earl Jones is great. (laughs) When you bring up the name Wendy Peppercorn, yeah, there's a different feeling around Wendy Peppercorn than there is around James Earl Jones. But she doesn't even have any lines. (laughs) That's I guess she's not she's not trying to bring it, but she doesn't have to. It's almost like her character is a heat check, let not the actress though. That's right? a good point. If we want to go so there she's on screen for like seven, eight minutes. That's it. Yeah. She's oiling, she's putting suntan yeah. lotion on. She saves someone's life. Mm-hmm. She gets No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. He's faking it. She yeah. But she does her duty as a lifeguard and would have saved yes. his life if he was actually mm-hmm. correct. Gives him mouth to mouth, gets sexually assaulted, <laughs> gets yeah. an entire dude <laughs> out of out of the pool. Yeah. Her clothes somehow all end up on the lawn. I don't know if Wendy was involved in that or not, but maybe. You really hung up on the clothes. Uh-huh. It's, it's, it's a big thing for my <laughs> and then She's just sitting in a chair giving this little wave to Squint. Yeah. And you never forget Wendy Peppercorn. So that's so that it's it's how we define heat check, right? Because like I would define it as the the performance of the actor slash actress, whereas you for the last 20 years, you didn't you it's not like Marley Shelton is off the top of your head, right? That name eludes you. You just know Wendy Peppercorn. So her Perhaps character, character, her character is the heat check character of the movie. Whereas James Earl Jones' acting is the acting heat check. I'm trying me. to think of another. I'm trying to think of another character where you don't know who the who the name of the character is, but you know the character. I also have one friend, my best friend from growing up, where we watch this movie like every other day and play wiffle ball together every other day. We still to this day text each other screenshots of James Earl Jones shitting and grins because it's like our favorite part of the movie. Because he's just like good. the so like, <laughs> ah, like from I'll, screen, right. I'll screenshot and text him like that face, and he'll and he'll just send me back like baseball is life, and I was good at it. <laughs> we could also argue that we could also argue that he probably did the most with the least amount of, of filming time, like his his one yes. day set. Yes, and mi- missing his sense. So we all right. I'll I'll give you I'll give you James Earl Jones as Mr. Myrtle as the acting Dion Waiters award, but from a character perspective, nobody's forgetting Wendy Peppercorn, and she's she's dashing. I mean, she's stunning. Yeah, you're right. She's like, we were all nine at the time, right? Nine or ten. So like, that's like your first like crush. And like, but everything that she doesn't even have to say anything. Everything she does, the little like when she's walking down the street in that green dress, Mm -hmm. she's. Just like they also zoom in on her butt, butt, which is pretty risque for a uh, kids movie. They do a nice butt. Sure, it is right? a nice yeah. shit. <laughs> <Thanks, Chris. laughs> yeah. I would also, I would also like to throw in an honorable mention for the Beast 
as the DM mm. sword, the actual dog. The first He's animal. For five minutes. I'd also like to throw in another honorable mention for the beast nutsack that makes an appearance in every <laughs> I don't know why they shot it from this angle. Well, they wanted you to know that it was a male dog. 20, 23.78 seconds on screen, maybe less. And you can't get that image out of your head. Yeah, it's a nope. big, it's a big nutsack uh, hanging out there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, casting what ifs, I don't really have any. I just have that Ham was a last minute addition to the movie. So, uh, Imported? like, yeah, they discovered wow. him last. They already had the team together. They interviewed him and they said, We really like you. We're going to have you play baseball and hang out with the kids for two weeks. And if you get along, we'll put you in the movie. Was wow. this before You're the there big yet? Green? Was this Instagram before the too. big green? This was, yeah, this was his first movie. He's, okay. I can't imagine anyone not liking that guy. I, I can't you, imagine. No, no, I, I'm not saying that. I, I, of course, they liked him immediately. I'm just trying to, like, yeah, the what if is, what, what if he wasn't in the movie? It's a different movie. Like, they, that, it was a very late addition. Like, it's crazy to think about this movie without him. Yeah. Do we he know wouldn't who be as good. Was, do we know who the catcher was supposed to be? If you say, yeah, no. yeah. Shit. No. They, I think they were still searching for the ninth player, and it okay. was him. But it, it could have just been someone who was inconsequential in the plot. That's so incredible wow. fine. Yeah. And then recasting couch, I it's hard. I was just trying to think of famous actors from the nineties who were kids in ninety-three. Uh Jenna wants me to mention Andrew Keegan from Camp Nowhere. Uh, <laughs> great movie. Wait, what is this category? Well, what would he cast think? uh recasting couch? If you can replace any character with an any character with another actor. No, Keegan's a scene stealer. He's too good looking. He's yeah. too good looking. That's great. <laughs> none of these kids, like Benny's, Benny's yeah. fine. Benny's good looking. Yeah. But like none of these kids are, are scene stealers. Porter, yeah. you, you, you got to have, you got to have the personality, Sean. Everybody's yeah. got to have their own. So Keegan's I just came up with too... a list of actors who, who would have been in the age range back then. It was Edward Furlong from Terminator 2, Macaulay. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Ben Savage, Keenan Thompson, Adam Banks from the Mighty Ducks, Joshua Jackson from the Mighty Ducks, or uh, Dark Horse would have been, Leo DiCaprio would have been right in the sweet spot. DiCaprio they could have was filming Gilbert <laughs> too, too big of a star. Yeah, even, too big of a star. Yeah, even but then. like, you know, was... like the Mighty Ducks, this is where we could talk about the Mighty Ducks crossover. Like what, what, what team is a better team of characters? Ooh. I'm going to pee while you guys do this. We, <laughs> no, we're just, we can't pause it, but we'll just wait. All right. <laughs> I mean, I, I think the, the Sandlot has the better team of characters. I feel like the Mighty Ducks in general doesn't have a ton of personality, right? I'm missing memory that movie. You're, you're missing some stuff. I mean, they got, <laughs> especially if you factor in D2. Yeah, well, D2, I, I do like better. I think Keenan um, could have been a nice addition to the movie. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking out loud now. I feel like but they were never going to have two black kids on the team in the 60s. Yeah. Huh. I was just yeah. thinking if they were to remake this, they would want a female. And I guess I was thinking the ice box from Little Giants. I don't know if that's a little too yeah. late. You um, know what? I had this written down for what's age the best and I forgot it. I love the fact, and not to be like sexist or like chauvinistic, that, it, that there's not a female <laughs> on the team. Because every other movie now, they do that. Every yeah, other kid's no, movie, there has to be like one or two girls. They try and hit all the. I mean, Andy, I'm saying like my what's age the best that I forgot about is that there's no female on the roster. Not to be like a sexist no like, jerk about it. Like every other kid's movie from that point forward or on, it's got to have like the token girls. You have to. And there's just no way a girl was was mixing in with that Sandlot crew in the '60s. So well, they, yeah, <laughs> and. Fair. They got that one right because no girl would have been allowed to play with the guys in the 60s, but they then strangely yeah. the fact that James Earl Jones played on the Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. Yeah. Well, girls play softball, not baseball, too. I mean. So, the, yeah. But if we go back to the Mighty We're Ducks argument, the Mighty <laughs> Ducks had, had Charlie, uh, Jesse yeah. Hall, who is the Nunes. Terry Who's Hall. better? Who's better? Who's better? Kenny DeNunez or Jesse Hall? Kenny DeNunez played triple A ball. 
Yeah, but Jesse Hall says cake eater. <laughs> or a better character or better? Yeah. <laughs> better. <laughs> oh, <laughs> both, I guess. Yeah, oh, Jesse Hall is clearly a better character. Danuna's Danuna's has, like, ha- I mean, I can't think of a line that Danuna says. Heater. Heater. Yeah, heater. Yeah. 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 And he spits not very not well. Fulton yeah. Reed. The Ducks have Fulton Reed. They have Hans. The Ducks uh, have better characters. It's not even, I mean, it's not even close. Fulton Goldberg. Reed anything either. Goldberg, the goalie. So there are. He's uh, their ham porter. I would argue that the Mighty Ducks, every Goldberg. single, every single one of those guys, except for Guy Germain, who's just Connie's boyfriend. Every one of those people, and Terry Hall, who says nothing in all of the movies. All Terry of Terry Hall's Jesse Smollett, by the way. Uh huh. What's that? Terry Hall know. is played by Jesse Smollett. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. All of those characters have their own personalities. In the Sandlot, you have Porter Smalls, and you could argue Bertram, but then you just have Jesse or. Um, Benny. Well, Smalls, Squints is Porter. Squints is a pretty big character. Squints. Yeah, Squints. Yeah. And yeah. everybody else, it just kind yeah, of yeah. out the ensemble. They're, they're not developed yeah. as well, which they don't yeah. need to be. It's fair because the movie okay. works with the group. Yeah. Um. Quotes. Obviously, the best quote is "You're killing me, Smalls." It's timeless. But what's the second best quote? I think we need to decide what the second best quote is. And my other options were "Forever." Uh, oiling and lotioning, lotioning and oiling. Heroes get remembered. Legends never die. Heroes you play get... ball like a. Yeah, yes, you play ball like a girl. A uh, couple other little ones. Just the use of the term "pickle" is used a lot in the movie. Uh, he got us into the biggest pickle we'd ever been in. Uh, he's an L seven weenie. Yeah, Oscar <laughs> Mayer. Uh, <laughs> and then I have right before they go to the pool. Porter's so like sweaty and fat, and he goes, "Come on, Benny, I'm baking like a Georgia geezer." <laughs> <laughs> You're all great. I missed the uh, Georgia geezer one. I never even heard. <laughs> Mark, you got anything? Oh yeah, uh, I I feel like I've seen this movie so, like uh, so many times when I was younger that like the main quotes don't I don't know don't resonate as much, but. Uh, I had, uh, what is it? He had kissed a woman and he had kissed her long and good. Like the yeah, narrator that's, says it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what. <laughs> you kissed her long and he kissed her good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the other one I had was, uh, I think it's when they play the rival Little League team. Porter gets up to the bat. And he's like, hurry up, batter. It's going to be a short game and I have to get home for lunch. <laughs> great delivery. Uh, I don't know. There's the two that maybe not. not I mean, you're killing me. Smalls is the best, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's. I've got a, like, I've got a few. Classic. I've got a few extra ones that are that are kind of under the radar ones too. Um, when Benny is talking to Babe Ruth, and he's talking about. He's, he's telling Babe Ruth about the beast. He's like, what are you afraid of? And Benny goes, a giant gorilla dog thing that ate one kid already. <laughs> <laughs> that one Benny's, Benny's really good in that scene. <laughs> he's, he's really good in that scene. Yeah. Um, right in the middle, or, or right in the beginning when it's Small's first game, or first time on the Sandlot, and he goes out and shows Small's where to stand. I think it's yeah yeah who yells from the infield. He goes, "This is a total dad joke," but it got me when yeah. I watched it on the rewatch. He goes, "Hey Benny, hurry up! My clothes are going out of style." <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good one-liners. Like from the dad from the yeah. side. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, after, I mean, all the insults are good. Yeah. yeah, this is. I think this is the best quote. There's two good ones from the narrator. Who after he got he gets really embarrassed for not knowing um, who the the great Bambino is that whole mm-hmm. thing he comes back with the narrator comes back over the top and goes even my mom a grown up girl knew who Babe Ruth was <laughs> <laughs> that's good writing and then uh, after they throw up at the carnival the narrator comes back with 
a couple of days after we got over acting like big shots, we swore off the hard stuff forever and just stuck to bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> but you're killing me, Smalls. Um, what What do you say more in real day life other than you're killing me, Smalls? Because I think forever. and you like it, just the part of and you like it is and has like lived it. on well. Like you can say that to anything, and people will know what you're talking about. I think the forever forever is easy. comes up more. Forever. I use forever and you're killing me smalls more than anything. But you smor- you're killing me smalls a lot. No, I think it's- Oiling I- and lotioning, too, is also pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That one every day. <laughs> I mean, every time I'm on the beach, I feel like it comes up. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's Put watching lotion. for blood. He's going to oiling, <laughs> lotioning. I just think it's pretty profound that this movie came up with Heroes Get Remembered, Legends Never Die. Like, That's a phenomenal I don't- I think that that's one that people say or recognize and say all the time, but don't know where it's from. Okay, that's fair. Right. Yeah. And so it wasn't Art Lafleur. Who <laughs> was the first one to ever say it? Who was the big? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if, like, I wonder if we could do some more half ass internet research and find out if that was if that's been used anywhere else because it seems like it has been around forever. Yeah. Forever. Forever. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, I also really like, is that your sister out there in left field? Naked? naked. Ah, yes. Great. And then as the pitch yes. is coming, he says, she's <laughs> naked. And then he gets so caught up in talking shit that he drops the strike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that they left it in there because it was probably the only time you said it straight face. It was uh, like, strength three, you're out. Like before the pitch even crosses yeah. the plate. Strength three, you're out. Yeah. yeah. Are they playing Little League rules? I don't know. I have a lot of questions. I, I, I didn't care enough to, like, bring it up. But, like, that other team, like, do they Sucks. have a coach? Do they have a – if they're a traveling team, that you think they'd have a bench? Why are they so bad? There's three guys on the bench during the okay. game. Three or four. Yeah, I mean, the coach is not going to come to a game with the Sandlot team. I don't know. But why wouldn't the coach then try and get the Sandlot guys on the team? Yeah. Maybe you got to pay to be on. I don't know. You got to pay to be on. Yeah, the I know. Yeah, maybe maybe it's, right. maybe it's a class thing. Maybe it's a, it's a class it's thing. A travel team. Yeah. Okay. This was a this was a rivalry issue in our town when we were growing up. There was the we called ourselves the Elmhurst All Stars, and then there were the Cougars, the Elmhurst Cougars. Yeah. The Cougars went and played in all the the big tournaments, had all the money, and we yeah. were all time team. We never played each other because. The rivalry was so real that the coaches never, the coaches and the parents never wanted the kids to have bad blood because they knew that all these teams were going to feed together into the high school and have to be teammates yeah. one day. Mm, that's interesting. So uh, these things happen. Yeah. Off the unanswerable, book. unanswerable questions. Time. Let's start out with the big one. What? <laughs> Give me. Benny the Jet Rodriguez's baseball reference page. What what does that career look uh, like? I, I think a lot is of he, is is he a steals a guy? Of, uh, is he 30 30 for a couple years? Hang on. Is he uh well, what like, his because he because he, he's player? he's you the way that he's announcing him at the end, you gotta you, you gotta think he's over embellishing because it's his best friend. I know and, who he is. Um and then it's you know, he, he made that statement like he still got some tread in those tires or something like that. I forget the exact phrase yep. of it. Yep. So he clearly was a stolen base guy, especially because the movie was meant to be based on on speed, not power. So you got to think he had a couple like 50 stolen base seasons, right? About 50. No. Yeah, I think 30, maybe 40. No, <laughs> he's not playing. <laughs> he's, he's, he's last in the league clearly a long time, though, if he's we, coming in to pinch run. We have no idea. We never see Benny throw the ball. Yeah, but we Does just he know that he's Benny. Ball? But he's Benny. <laughs> he's Benny. I just pulled up Terrence Gore's baseball reference. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's had a better career than that. He can hit a ball into somebody's glove from, like, pinpoint accuracy as a 12-year-old from, like, 150 yards away. I mean, I think you you do have to go off of Smalls as an adult. And he outran a fucking dog for like 20 minutes. (laughs) Do you know how fast (laughs) dogs are? Dogs are really fast. 
You know what? You're you're the guy. You're the guy around the A's scouting table that Billy Bean tells to go fuck off. <laughs> but yeah, right. you got, so That's Benny like, Benny was twelve in nineteen sixty two. So you got to think he's hitting the majors by like mid seventies. Sixty-two. So what's that era of baseball? I don't. I feel like I don't he's know getting it struck out by Nolan Ryan a lot. But that's it's a big like speed stolen base doubles singles error. So era. he starts. He in would be seventies. So he, he would be pretty good at eighties. You think he lasts till the eight, late eighties? I'm hoping the movie isn't set in the present time. But yeah, there's no way he lasts till the nineties. That'd like be insane. Yeah. He's no, he's not a longevity guy. He's a fast. Guy. He's like a yeah. What what did you guys think of? Uh, I would think he was like I just I just wrote down some numbers. I'm just gonna I, I wrote down that he was a 243 lifetime hitter. He played 12 seasons. He never drove in more than 60 runs a year. Never hit more than 10 homers a year. But he stole 40 bases four times. Stole yeah. 20 bases six times. And he was just a big. He was like your your pinch runner type he's kind like, of guy towards the end like of his Like a Lance career. Johnson. Yeah. I think Lance Johnson's better, much better. But he might have been – and he was probably a good, Paris a damn cool. good outfielder if we ever got to see him out there. He probably well, was a good, you guys good say center Dave fielder. Dave Roberts earlier? Did one of you guys say Dave Roberts? Yeah. He's yeah. like that, right? Yeah, I think he's better. I think he's a better hitter than Dave Roberts. But yeah. Dave Roberts would have been my next guy that I would have pulled up on baseball reference for his, for his stat line. <laughs> yeah. He hit the cover He's, off the ball as a kid, but he did. He had he had a very weak frame. So here's so I don't the think thing. he was blasting balls out. I think he was hitting it's a lot a, of singles a and slap singles season. and doubles. This is all we need to know, though. This is a regular season Dodgers game. We're assuming I don't know. This is what, the end of his career. This is the end of his the very end. Of, this could have been his last game ever. Could have been. We know. Yeah. But it could have been. I don't know. It could have been. I guess Tom Geary grown up. Who's the actor that plays? That plays Scott Smalls. That would have. That's another that guy vote. I've seen that guy in a, in a number of things. But I think the guy who plays Smalls, the older the kid, Smalls, yeah. older Smalls, older Smalls. Oh, the kid, Smalls the kid, the kid, the kid Smalls has actually had a pretty good career. He's probably had the best career of all in the majors. Um, was he slashing <laughs> two ninety nine? <laughs> no, I'm talking about his acting career. We're, I'm talking about. Benny the Jet Rodriguez's <laughs> baseball career. Oh, I'm talking about his age and where he might be at the at this point in his career. But right? Andy, yeah. when, when the older Smalls narrates that last scene, like as the announcer, he's like, "Does this old guy still have something left on the tires?" It seems like he's at the end of his career. Yeah, it seems so, like he's like it's yeah describing Benny, yeah. older Benny. They're the, so I, they're, well, if the movie comes out in '93, then theoretically Benny would be like in his early 40s. Yeah, it's too old, right? To be yeah, pinch runner. To be hanging on as a, as a pinch runner <laughs> <laughs> and stealing home. That guy's I mean, his legs. Yeah, his legs. Buddy is Benny shape. the Jet. He out, he outran Hercules. So he a great shape. Yeah. Do you think that? Do you think that he he tells people in the dugout when they're like, "Who are you?" <laughs> I'm I'm Benny Rodriguez. I outran Hercules when I was 13 years yes. old. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's a great that's a good question, question. That's, a, yeah, that's a great um, that's a good one my second one is how did a squints wendy relationship actually unfold like because he, he's 12 we got to think at least her, she our actress was 19, 18 or 19 but she was playing a 16 or 17 year old 16 15 16 15 yeah. 16 did they date in high school when she was in high school and he was in middle school all throughout and then get married was it like on and off did he not did she not come around until a few years later once he hit puberty? Like, how did it how did it play out? And then they had nine kids. It's a good question. Because there's no way if she was that hot and she was a senior, she's dating a kid in eighth grade because he kissed her long and hard at the pool. But you gotta think about you gotta think about Michael Squint's Paladoris's <laughs> style here. <laughs> how long did he say he had been? planning that one for years i planning it for years for years for years. For years my entire <laughs> yeah. adult life i've seen this happen uh, he slow played the fuck <laughs> yeah he yeah. gave her i'm just serious little nugget I yeah i mean we don't know what squints i mean he probably got contact lenses at some point 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. he literally just hits fourteen and shoots up and. Well, they own Vincent Scrug. They own Vincent Scrug store still to this day. So yeah, <laughs> they didn't like <laughs> move on to like asses. big and better things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think um, he slow played it. I think he waits until she yeah. goes away. I, to I don't. Yeah, I don't think they were dating people, all through high comes school. Back. Yeah. But they do have to have eight kids, so you can't slow play it too long. Nine. 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 Sorry, nine. Nine kids. Yeah. yeah. Can't pull, slow play too long. I feel like Wendy was probably popping him 15. out when she was in her forties, right? Yeah, she had to have been for that. Took care of herself. That amount yeah. of work. Yeah. yeah. Um. Other unanswerable. They. My third biggest one is. What, what happened to Vin Scully to allow Smalls to take his job? <laughs> 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 I didn't even think about that. That's brilliant. Arguably brilliant. the greatest sports announcer of all time. For so brilliant. One of the most iconic franchises of all time is seating his chair to a kid who with his <laughs> dorky trout hat. That's amazing. Just a better question. All right. Now I've got a whole different take on Benny the Jet Rodriguez. <laughs> Mark, do you have any thoughts about this? Because now I'm I'm well, I'm the, the only thing I'm just, of... my my instant thought was that maybe it's you know one what was Vince Scully radio and maybe Scott's doing TV. I, I don't know. It looks like he's clearly doing radio. It, he's it, got it that old timey like, mic. Yeah. He gets yeah. up and he's he's celebrating the call while he's, he's not even talking into it. the microphone. He turns around. The yeah, Jack steals time. home. Now it's time for the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, here's I did not what, even think about that. That's brilliant. Here's what happened. Now that you bring it up, <laughs> now I'm thinking about this. I want to change. First thing I want to do is change Benny the Jet Rodriguez's stat line in his career. I think he turns into a Dodger legend. Oh. I think. Well, he does. He is getting a standing L, and the crowd seems to love him. And they carry him off the field. Yeah, no one gets carried when off he's the field. Forty anymore. years old. So yeah, he makes. He has an incredible Dodgers career. Slashes like. 298, 601, let's say somewhere in the nines, no OPS. Yeah. Smalls approaches him later on and says, hey, Benny, I think I'd be a great asset to the Dodger organization. They give him his own (laughs) box and fake radio station. So that Vince Scully <laughs> is right next to him, but Smalls uh, is just as a favor to the great man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're gonna have a chance to call the game. You're gonna be on the air. It's yeah. gonna be great. And Benny's like paying mm. two or three guys to hang out at there as his producers. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a radio station where you can listen to the only, the Benny the Jet Pro. Radio cast. There's an or it's not even on the air. It's not. No, it's just, they, it's just, he'll just for small. They'll throw a couple of guys in the stadium, a hundred bucks every once in a while. Like, go tell that guy in the stupid fucking hat that he did a good job on the radio the other day. Did you hear that, Mark? Did you hear all that? I did. I did. I did. <laughs> that's why. Really? That's why he's still wearing the hat. And he told yeah. to put that hat on so that everybody knows that that's the idiot running the fake radio yeah. program for the Dodgers. So well, you got to hire the, the two guys in the background that he, he high fives after he steals the base. To yeah. Just yeah. Come to the fine. game every day. A couple of interns, a couple interns. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, yeah. It's like a couple of guys like, Oh, I get, I get a box in Dodger stadium. <laughs> Cause yeah. like they could have yeah. easily had it just been like, he was a writer and like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And Vin's calling the game. Maybe they couldn't get Vin. Uh, either they way. Got, it's just, yeah. They got some baseball history issues. Don't you think the only other uh, wait, Mark? Go ahead. I was just gonna say that final shot when after Benny steals the base, like the players like surround him, and then he just looks up at the box and gives the the thumbs up. It's so dorky, yeah. Oh, oh, come on, a little cheesy, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This is Uh, he really looks, he really looks like Piazza there, too. Like, so much Piazza. The Dodgers also at that point have effectively failed to carry him off the field because they tried. Yeah, it's like they and then he got off his shoulders to give the thumbs up to the guy running the fake radio station in the box behind the plate. Oh, God. Yeah. Just put that picture on the wall of all of us up there. It'll give him some good nostalgia. 
<laughs> the only other things I, I had written down were uh, they say Bertram got really into the 60s. I'd love to know more about that. Uh, yeah, that was my number one. And we never Bertram. saw him again. And uh, what happened? Who was Smalls' real dad? Ooh. Oh. Good question. Yeah. He never even gets referenced. Like, did he pass away? Did he get divorced? Right. Did he walk out? Did he? Yeah, that's a good question. Unanswerable. Totally unanswerable. Because <laughs> he seems to be pretty well adjusted. Yeah. Aside from his lack of athletic ability. Is that a no? Oh, yeah. Adjustment thing. <laughs> <laughs> This kid who can't uh, play sports, he's not well adjusted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I, my guess is that it was, a, it was an early exit. Yeah. Didn't know him. Yeah. Yeah. Death or, or abandonment. Either <laughs> way. Didn't know him. Hmm. So and what is Bill, and, what, and in contrast to that, what is Bill's job? I was, that was, I was really yeah, 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 yeah. 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 What's he doing in LA? Good. What's he going to Chicago for? <laughs> <laughs> Just like there, business. Do they? Do we ever know? Like where they? Where is the? Where is it set? The the childhood. It's is something. It in, it's something. This Valley Vista. I think you see on the side of a of the scoreboard. Okay. It says like Valley Vista, a little. Outside it's of outside LA. of LA. It's outside okay. of LA. For right. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys have any other unanswerables? Those are some. Wait, wait, wait. What do we think is Bill's job, Mark? Uh... I, I I literally could not come up with, come up with anything. He, he just seems like LA. your standard like run of the mill sales guy. Salesman, you know? yeah, yeah, salesman. Yeah, I think he's what? an accountant. Going be, to Chicago he, though, he, you, well, no he's doing paperwork. He's got clients in Chicago. He's writing down in the books the whole time that yeah. they're there. Sales guys aren't but, writing in the books. But we didn't have computers yeah, back then. Everybody was writing down in the books. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Good point. But he's I don't know. I don't know if he's right. We'll have to take I want to take a closer look at that scene because I don't know if he's writing down numbers or if he's just writing words and they're writing okay. his notes down. Okay. Um, I, I you guys have any he's going to Chicago like every fucking yeah. other guy who yeah. needs to do business from nineteen thirty to nineteen eighty yes. every American yeah, Chicago. Yes. Yeah. I have one other unanswerable question. So when when Benny the Jet is at bat and he shatters the ball, the leather comes off the ball, but the I guess the the core of the ball is caught in the center. I think it's caught by Smalls. Center. Yeah. If that were actually to happen in a game, would the batter be called out? And I wasn't quite sure what the answer would be to that. I don't know if that's Ooh. an answerable question or not. If that were to actually happen, I, we have we have a side that it's physically probably impossible to do that. Um, is that actually an out? I don't know. Unanswerable question. Are you are you actually googling this? No, no, I, <laughs> no. I'm, Andy's I'm typing, so I'm wondering if he's. No, my, if he's my arms just look like this normally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say yeah. I would think you're out. You, right? Yeah, I would think you're out too. But I, no, unanswerable. There's gotta be a. There's you think it's in the rule book? For this. Might be. Uh, it, apart I'm from actually, that, I did look up how these guys, how the kids were looking to buy baseball. I think they said 98 cents in the movie. And I just like looked on Amazon for what the 2020 baseball costs. What, what do you think it costs? Like the Major League Baseball official 2020 baseball. What do you think it actually costs? Them? Oh, to own? Yeah. I would say buy one on Amazon. $5.99. I saw eleven seventy nine on Amazon. Wow! For one yeah. baseball? Well, this is the Major League Baseball official. Yeah, that, this is what I thought. So it's actually happened more often than we think. The shattered baseball? Yeah, it's happened like a number of times in in history. And yeah, the the ball's in play until, um, until you make an outer. Like nice. it's still in play. Oh, nice. Yeah. Monty's? Should a ball come partially apart in a game, it is in <laughs> until the play is completed. Not an unanswerable question. I apologize for bringing it up. But, so, but, but Andy, does that mean you could pick up the leather portion and throw that to first? Which what, what, be, what becomes the ball in it's, this situation? I think, it's, I think it's the part closest to the rubber on the inside. Yeah, 
that's the heart that's the heart of the ball yeah that's I a good it that's a good question seven seven concentric spheres i think <laughs> it's the, the, the smallest one that counts <laughs> Yeah, and do you have any unanswerables? Uh, this is the one the one category where I don't have anything written down. That's fine. We had some good stuff, so. <clears throat> All right, what do we got? Uh, Apex Mountain. Uh, it's, I mean, it's clearly Apex Mountain for <laughs> Benny the Jet. <laughs> Hamilton Porter, Smalls, Squints. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that it's, you can throw that to the side, but like, is it Apex Mountain for the '60s baseball? Wait, can we just we're just gonna go we're just gonna go actors <laughs> here. No. It's Apex Mountain for everyone in the movie who isn't over Jim Jill Jones over yeah. fifteen years old. Yes. 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 Well, no, exactly. no actually, I disagree. 19, I think 19, including Wendy Peppercorn. Yeah. Mighty Ducks is Apex Mountain for, uh, for Denuda. Yeah. For Denuda. Yeah. Benny the Jet, obviously, is like, this is never getting big. And then Hamilton went in to be, he was in heavyweights, but this is bigger. Did much bigger. Much bigger. Not even close. I wrote down a PF Flyers, the shoes that uh, mm -hmm. Benny wears. Make you run uh, they were actually the, the precursor to Converse. Uh, PF Flyers were originally worn by Bob Cousy, and they would that company went on to merge with Converse and become Converse. But probably Apex Mountain for PF Flyers in 1962. Definitely. Is Converse actually business now? Yeah, Converse is bought by an Asian company, and I think it is still cranking out stuff. So this movie is not Apex Mountain for PF Flyers. <laughs> hmm. Because we've got varying oh. timelines. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. That so would be a better just, cover for yeah. who won the movie. P PF yeah, Flyers yeah, could have yeah, won yeah, yeah. the movie. No, they didn't need the movie. They it's just win. all the kids. It's all the kids. It's easy. I think Bob Cousy supersedes Benny the Jet Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. That's it. Uh, yeah. Apex Mountain for, like, Sandlot Baseball, obviously. Clearly, kids playing like just kids playing. I think Apex kid, I think I think the question is is Apex Mountain for kid movies. Oh, wow, is, there better, wow. is there a better move? Is there a better movie that that really encompasses what it's like to be a kid? Growing in like this, like a sports loving, mm. sports playing kid. Is there any better? Yeah, you're right. You're I, I might cool. like, I might like the two Mighty Ducks better, but this is a better movie about what it's like to be a kid. The Mighty Ducks have have adult. It's unrealistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's adult. It's it's unrealistic too. Like you said, there's no other parents in the movie other than mm -hmm. Karen Allen and Dennis Leary, yeah. who have seven to nine minutes of screen time total. Yeah. yeah. No, it's Apex Mountain for kids. Yeah, kid life. The only other, the only other one that I have to that I have to bring up is a Christmas story again. Mm. They, it does. They do nail the kid during the holidays. But let's say this is Apex Mountain for kids playing. Yeah, I agree yeah. With that. I don't think um, there's another one. Do we want to bring Goonies up? They're not playing. That, yeah, they're like solving a crime. Okay. Uh, yeah. so we're we're going to bring Stan. We're not going to bring Stan yeah. by this conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there were two sequels. There was The Sandlot 2 in 2005, which is a direct to video, which there was the same narrator and writer. James Earl Jones actually returned for his role as Mr. Myrtle in this one. Uh, and the. Uh, the protagonist was Smalls' younger brother, Johnny, set 10 years later in 1972. The dog, instead of being referred to as the beast, was referred to as the great fear and was found out to be the child of Hercules. Sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. I've never, never seen it. And then they made another it. one, in two, yeah, another one two years later in 2007 called The Sandlot Heading Home, uh, which stars Luke Perry as Tommy Santa Santarelli. 
who was a Dodgers player in, in 2005 who gets knocked in the head with a baseball and then his mind gets sent back to 1976 for some whole sort of adventures and actually Squints is back somehow in this movie as well. Um, <laughs> Yikes. Apparently a TV s- movie. Yeah. A- and then the question about could this be remade as a Netflix series? No, but apparently a TV series with the original cast is in the works for Disney Plus. So I don't yeah. know what the hell that's going to look like. The Maybe cast- them being parents. Yeah. Well, the cast if, if it's the cast, made- I'll have to watch it. But yeah, the original cast for the um, for the 25th anniversary, I think, in 2018, made some rounds around uh, big league stadiums, showing yes, up they did. Like, in cameos. They did. Mm-hmm. A lot of big league teams like recreated a couple of the scenes too, and it was like a whole thing. Um, I mean, baseball players like major leaguers to this day still like swear by this movie, which is good because those guys are in their early twenties. Yeah, so yeah. it's not going away. That's not scary. Like, right. It's it's the best baseball movie, right? If we go back to Apex Mountain, like it's better than Rookie of the Year. It's better than kids baseball movie. It's better than. Um, I, I, I disagree. Uh, yeah, I put. Little Big League, pretty close to it. It's not as popular, but it's I not a. Really this is like I, I. I think I've said this about six times already. I. I don't yeah. think it's a baseball movie. It's a movie about. It's a movie about kids and childhood and kids hanging out. Yeah. The, or that centered well, around. Say, it, it's. Let's say those are the three movies that we associate as kids baseball movies: The Sandlot, Rookie of the Year, and Little Big League. Which one are you choosing to watch if if someone puts a gun to your head? If I'm if I want to if I want to watch them, I'm choosing the Sandlot every time. But if I'm talking mm-hmm. about the best baseball movie, I'm going Little Big League. That movie gets everything right. That movie did its research. That movie. Well, was yeah, not, I, I, I guess I need to watch Little Big League, League again. It's really good. It's in really good. on the Pirates team. Yeah, with white guys in the '40s. He just wouldn't have. Yeah, the baseball in Rookie of the Year is a little suspect. No one can play. This movie yeah. actually does a really good job of the kids actually being able to play baseball. They trained them. It was it was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, Rookie of the year. Everybody in that movie sucks. I'd also put uh, like yeah. Major League as sure, yeah. also an incredible baseball. Yeah. Movie. Before we get to uh, who won the movie, Andy, do you want to introduce your new categories? Because I think we should end on who won the movie. Of that's course. a hard conversation. Um, I kind of already introduced them i i wanted to go with um i wanted to add in little things that they did right but i think i kind of i kind of spattered these in as we went in the scenes where everyone is sprinting the scene where everyone's sprinting after smalls when and these are just like little staging things that i Mm -hmm. think are done really well that like shows that these guys knew what they were doing in some ways, baseball history aside, yeah. In the scenes where everyone is sprinting after Smalls when he tries to climb the fence for the first time before he knows about the beast, Benny starts from home plate or starts from somewhere in, but Benny's the first one out there showing that Benny is the fastest one on the team, even though he gets a lagging. Mm. He doesn't get a head start, which is really good because he's supposed to be the fastest guy out there. I also think that they got when Smalls backpedals and falls down. I've seen that shit happen all the way up. Yeah, through. it's really perfect. Yeah, it's really realistic the yeah, way that they really good. you were talking yeah. about how they it, it took them a lot of time to make small to teach Smalls to be bad yeah. at baseball. It yeah. makes sense that they, like they taught him how to do that because that is how yeah. someone falls the fuck down backpedal yeah. after a baseball. Um, and I also talked about how they have nine guys only, but they put Smalls in left center because they need somebody mm-hmm. else to, to hit. Um, and I wanted to talk about the best insult of the movie. But I think we covered that in the time when I recited the entire West. What is the best? Thing? The best insult is you play ball like a girl still, right? <sighs> it's it's a lot of good back It's the hardest. I don't think it's aged well. <laughs> but yes, but it's a '60s movie, so yeah. Um, Th- that's the beauty of the movie. You can just write off anything like that, as far as like, well as the '60s, right? You bob for apples yeah. in the toilet, and you like it. But who bobs for apples in the toilet? 
Like no. you actually play ball like a girl is like something that like someone could say about you, right? You and we saw, and it, and, it, and, it, and it ties into the way that Smalls throws the ball the first time he throws it. Yeah. It so also like, goes, it also ties into even my mom, a grown up girl, knew who Babe Ruth was. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a really underrated line. And if you? my dog was as ugly as you, I'd shave his butt and tell him to walk backwards. <laughs> like, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Um, and I had the, the best, where are they now? At the end of the oh, movie, they go through. Cool. They go through everybody. Yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah. all written down. I was going to do this beforehand, but where Timmy and Tommy have uh, mini malls. They started mm-hmm. out like with oh, swing sex. sets and something else, and then they invented became multimillionaires and they invented mini malls. Uh, Bertram got lost in the '60s. Squints married yeah. Wendy. They bought Vincent's. Uh, Kenny played AAA, and now he coaches his little son's little league team called the Heaters. Benny, we know, played for the Dodgers. Smalls became an announcer. Uh, so yeah, yeah, is the only one. He's a bungee jumper or something, right? Bungee jumper. Yes, he became bun- yeah. he became a bungee jumper because of the the high wire act that they did. Yes, that's, that's right. it, right? The whole team. Uh, Porter. Oh what yeah, Porter. What, what did you? What did you? Wrestler, right? Professional. Wrestler. Oh, professional. The great yeah. Hambino. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the best where are they now yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, it's between it's got to be between squints who married wendy peppercorn and porter yeah and porter. the great yeah, that's, fair. that's fair yeah could you imagine like nine kids in a house with squints though oh my god like uh sounds terrible feeding them whole sides of beef <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any other takes? Anything that they didn't get to say at any my, point? My only other thing to maybe add, and, and for some reason now I can't remember what it was like, but besides from the soundtrack, I thought because we all like talking about scores sometimes, if we had like a score talk. I, the I score is really, I was actually thinking that too. The score is like, they don't use it enough, but like the few times it's like, it's dun, good. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. It like, feels it, like, good score. It, 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 yeah. it feels very, um, like '90s nostalgic. It's really yeah. good. It's timeless though. It doesn't feel dated. It's not like no. it doesn't have the synthesizer like an '80s movie, or yeah, like it's um, like a poor man John, poor man's John Williams score. Yes, I should have did research to see who did the, the score. It was an interesting look at. But it maybe it it's probably was just like it forward. was probably just like a nobody. I don't you yeah, know. Like I think you can just like buy that. I would also like to point out how this movie ranks. Like it's still it's still around. Like it's still everyone still talks about this movie. I want to talk about the movies that came out at the same time and yeah. how well this movie stands up again. Because oh yes, yeah, so you have your list. Yeah, an incredible movie year. So in 1993, we had Jurassic Park, Groundhog Day, The Fugitive, Schindler's List, Dazed and Confused, Tombstone. Wow. Nightmare Before Christmas, Mrs. Doubtfire, Falling Down, Bronx Tale, True Romance, Grumpy Old wow. Men. What's Eating Gilbert Grape? I watched Grumpy Old Men the other night. What a phenomenal movie it's that incredible. is. incredible. <laughs> uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape? That's why they couldn't get Leo to star in this movie because he yes. was. <laughs> in the Line of Fire, Rudy, Cool Runnings, Robin Hood Men in Tights, wow, Philadelphia, cool Carlito's Way. Andy just froze. Wayne's oh. World. Uh, the he, Pelican- look, he looks like he looks like the Joker. Who? You. Froze for a second. You just froze yeah. for a few minutes, and your and your smile was like Joker's Joker frozen. It's the mustache. Uh, <laughs> you that, got through a like phenomenal year. In the name of the Father, Free Willy, Last Action Hero, Coneheads, Hot Shots Part Two, Sleeper, uh, Remains of the Day. And then they start to kind of fall. Oh, Rookie of the Year also came out in the same year. I, mean, I want to say I've, I've seen eighty percent of those movies. We're talking about like twenty-five to thirty movies that are still talked about today. And this, yeah, this one's clearly in the, I think, in the top five to ten of those. What was the number one grossing one. movie in nineteen ninety-three? Do you have that? It's probably Jurassic Park. It's gotta. Oh be. yeah. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Yeah. 
<clears throat> wow, same year as Rookie of the Year, huh? Mm-hmm. Different movies. One's a baseball movie. One's a movie about kids. I think <laughs> I saw Rookie of the Year in the theater. I don't think I saw Sandlot until it was on video. I, how can you remember that? Okay. <laughs> I, re- I have memories yeah, yeah. of seeing Rookie of the Year in the theater. I just like remember yeah. it. I remember like yeah. having popcorn and watching that movie for the first time. Wow, what I, a great year. 93 is great. Takes? I've got one more take, but if anyone has any other ones... Well, I got nothing no, left well, until who won the movie, and then okay, you know, we were we're at we're, we're already we're at the two ten mark, so we did we did a good job. Um, my last one is I think there's a very real parallel, like I talked about um, this between the between the Sandlot and Christmas Story being a good movie about being a kid. I have another another parallel where I have to ask the question: Is Porter showing Smalls how to make s'mores, the kid movie equivalent of Clemenza making sauce and meatballs in The Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, uh, yeah, that's fair. I think it's a fair comparison. That's pretty good. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff in Home Alone, but it's Macaulay teaching it to himself. Uh, yeah, you need the two people. <laughs> I mean That's the funny. s'mores the s'mores teaching moment is like really great right like there's probably kids like who watched that movie and never had a s'more before yeah right also like what's age the best s'mores the fact that they're still around it's in my list of who won the movie <laughs> <laughs> s'mores is a, is a legitimate nominee and I'm, not, I'm not joking about that I think it's a legitimate <laughs> nominee for who won the movie uh, all so, right so who, won the, so who won the movie you say s'mores that's fine it's a nominee but i i think smalls is out he does not win the movie it's either benny squints or ham wait why why is smalls out i don't think he wins the movie do you right i don't he's know. annoying he's big chief tobacco he makes like nine friends he's gonna have the rest of his life that summer like after he doesn't know anything he doesn't he doesn't buy the big chief bertram buys the big chief yeah i'm not talking about the big chief i'm 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 saying that he makes nine friends that he didn't have like but does he win the the movie life when you watch that movie or you come out you're like man who's in my top three man who's your favorite if someone asks you who's your favorite character you're not gonna say smalls no but he's like the main character that doesn't mean he won the movie. I know, I know, I know. I know. Okay, okay. I would say Porter or Squints win the movie. Benny, be Benny, Benny's. Yes. Who do you have, Andy? Besides this, the Mars Hercules. I, just... <laughs> I think there's a. I think there's a good there's a good argument to be made for David Mickey Evans, who was down. Oh, that counts. Luck, yeah, that counts. That counts. Who had one chance, like you said earlier, and I, this wasn't on my list until you said that this was his one chance to yeah, put yeah, himself yeah. in Hollywood. But he comes out with this movie and makes in an amazing, ridiculous movie or one of the top five movies mm-hmm. is still talked but about. But my counter would my counter would be that it didn't really set him off on like a course right sure this was his apex mountain yeah right, definitely <laughs> this is definitely yeah we didn't we didn't mention that this is definitely david mickey apex. <laughs> <laughs> not even, well we said we said every, oh, he's the only one under the age of 20 who this is actually his apex mountain yeah <laughs> but who of oh, the kids who won the movie it's that's porter. tough right it's porter I could get on board with Porter, Swince, Smalls, Benny. One of those four. We obviously have the, the, the four main characters. Half the team. <laughs> I'm saying it's Squints or Porter. Win the movie. Yeah. Who's the most memorable person in the movie? Yeah, I think you think of this movie, you think of could be the jet, though. It could, be, it could be the jet. Maybe it is the yeah. jet. He pickles the beast. The problem is that none of these guys ever went on to do anything again. I know. Right? I know. Like, they're in other kids' movies, but none of them ever had success as a young 
as a as an adult actor. Um, I think Benny, as an adult, got into some trouble. Got in a little. Uh, oh, he did. Got in a little. So did, so did, little, yeah, yeah. Little, yeah, a little trouble, a little drug trouble. Uh, Was it this seems like for it, it seems with- like Squints and Porter are still like out there like repping this movie. Like this is their job. Yeah, the <laughs> Porter and Squints were out there in the the 2018 25th anniversary. Yeah, tour. totally. Like Tom Geary. Um, was in Mystic River, the guy who plays Smalls. Yeah. Uh, he's in The Revenant. Uh, like this, he's a, he's been in like some big time movies with some big. What time part people. is he in The Revenant? Uh, it says he is Billy Brother Trapper. <laughs> I mean, I've only seen it once because yeah. I actually think that movie's terrible. Uh, it's not good. He's in he's in Mystic River. Uh, he's in Black Hawk Down. He's in U five seven one. He's in Lassie. He followed up Sandlot with Lassie as the son in Lassie. Uh, he he had like a career. Yeah. Whereas I, like I think we're missing someone. I think we're missing someone. I think what do you mean? For who won the movie? Uh Wendy? No. I think it's Babe Ruth. Oh. Well, that's an interesting the thought. Argument. That I, that, like, already, I mean, he's clearly won everything already, but there is one person that this movie aspires to be. Yeah, that's fair. That everyone in this movie aspires what's, to be. What's great about Babe Ruth in the movie is that those kids are in 1962, so they were born well after he even stopped playing. Mm-hmm. And they still, like, talk about him, like, with such, like, lore and affection so yeah it does help the name babe ruth live along right i probably learned about babe ruth from this movie i can't prove that but yeah right i was not so it's 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 babe ruth and s'mores my dad definitely didn't sit me down and talk to me about babe ruth uh what about 1960 what about the integrity of 1960s vacuum cleaners (laughs) <laughs> Patrick Renna the guy who played Porter uh, he was in the show Glow which uh, the Hills and Rats watch which is a great show um, man he hasn't been in a lot <laughs> we're, this is a I think we're I think we're digging too deep for this yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay who were the original ones, Mike? Who do you? Th- who were your original? It was it was Porter, are Benny, we going, or Squints? Are we going with Squints, Porter? So our top five are Benny, Squints, Porter, S'mores, and Babe Ruth. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> Smalls definitely win, didn't win the movie. He didn't. He's, he's not even the top. I five. would think. I would have thought he'd be top five, but okay. he kind of becomes um, a bystander through all of this. Yeah, yeah he really so. does. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna vote personally for Squints. I think you? he's like, he's part of every good scene. Like the, he's part of the pool scene. Obviously, he's great. Yeah. He's the main part of that. And when they're trying to get the ball, he's like the lookout guy. He's got That's, all the great oh. quotes. He takes over the campout scene. All our most rewatchable scenes. Squints is the best part. Aside from the Porter one-liners, but that's cheap, cheapness. Where Squints is, his essence of Squints is like the best part of the <laughs> and scene. I just thought, I just thought of something. I just thought of a moment in the movie where this might, this might actually like put Squints up on a pedestal or dethrone him completely, because when Mister Myrtle was like, "Well, why didn't you guys just come and knock on the door and?" Yeah, ask? yeah, yeah. Everybody be, like looks right at Squints and beats the shit out of him for like yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, right? for building the legend of the beast up. He's the one that tells the story, mm-hmm. and he's the one yeah. that everybody looks to. So he wins. It's, it's got to yeah. be Squints' backyard. Sorry, he, wins. Wins. Yeah. he wins. Yeah, it's Squints' yeah. backyard. Squints. It's his treehouse yeah. because he's the one that can girl. see the beast every day. He's the only one that would be able to debunk or. I'm going to research this, but I'm pretty sure it's the Timmons' backyard. I'm right. gonna. I'm gonna. But I think Squints wins the movie. I think we decided. Yeah, I think that. Squints. I think he wins. I'm in on that. I'm he in also marries Wendy Peppercorn and has nine kids. And he, yeah. and he marries her. He wins the movie. Yeah. He wins the movie. Yeah. 
I think that's a, uh, I think that's a good way to end it. We did a uh, close to two two twenty here, so it's good work. <laughs> Fantastic, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Simmons, those guys spent this amount of time on The Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, they cut a lot of theirs down. We could edit some stuff out if yeah. we wanted to. Uh, uh, I don't think we fun. should edit the thing. No. Nah. <laughs> so let's uh, pick another movie in like a week or so and do this again. This is a real fun. Down. What do we got Super next? Fun. What are we teasing for? Well, what was uh, run? I can't hardly wait. Was run. Uh, Billy Madison was also on that list. I would do that. I'm really excited to listen to Enemy of the State. I I like yeah me too. I like Can't Really Wait because it's a little under the radar. Um, okay. A little different genre, but I don't know. Let's keep Both tossing some ideas. things around. I wouldn't mind doing like a blowout like action movie either. Mm. Like, like a, a bad, bad boys one. or yeah, like a bad boys. Um, <laughs> by the way, something in like Line that. Fire, I love that movie from 1993. I don't know if you remember it. Which one? Of in course, the Clint Eastwood. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Classic. Solid. Yeah, all right, all right gentlemen. Yeah. Let's we'll we'll, we'll, we'll keep in touch and we'll think about it. Nicely done. Right. Stay safe. Nicely out. done. Good job, my right. <laughs> See you guys.